This is gonna be an old school style of no thank you video. The sort of one that's like an hour and a half long and it's like 20 videos stuck together. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm still working on the YouTuber one, but that'll be later. So first thing we're gonna cover, you may have noticed it. I have a tooth again. I have a tooth again. Tooth thank you is no more. And you might think, well, it's such a great thing. You got tooth now. It's not good. It's not a great thing. It doesn't fucking fit. It sticks out. You can't see on camera, but I can feel it. And what's more, I can't close my teeth anymore. It gets in the way. Look, I can't fucking close my teeth. I can't, no matter what I do, it doesn't work. Because it's just, because I couldn't go to the dentist because of corona, right? Fucking, the tooth was missing for a long time. And when your tooth is missing for a long time, your gum shrinks and the teeth next to it, your mouth like adjusts and starts to close the gap, right? And so my old tooth doesn't fit anymore. My old tooth doesn't fit anymore, which means that the bitch had to just like s fucking cement everywhere, just like jam it in there. It barely fits, it's uncomfortable, it's super uncomfortable. It like, if you look at the top, it like sticks out. This is not the most flattering angle, but it like, look, it's completely wrong. It should look the same as all the others. It used to look the same as all the others, but you can see it like sticks out. Not good, not good. It's, I can't eat. They, they literally said I can't eat with my front teeth. I can't eat at all with my front teeth. Plus, it's gonna fall out soon anyway, according to her. That because it just doesn't fit properly, it's just gonna fall out again at some point. And now I'm worried that it's gonna fucking fall out while I'm in my sleep. I'm gonna choke to death on my, my shit. I don't wanna choke to death on my shit while I'm asleep. I don't wanna be eating something choked to death on my shit. I, don't, I need to chew with my fucking front teeth. Fuck you think this is? I shouldn't have even got this done in the first place. I was completely fine just having a missing tooth. I didn't give a shit at all. It was my mum that made me fucking get fixed. Why? Does it fucking matter? It doesn't fucking matter. It's fine. Humans are able to survive without two teeth. It's completely, perfectly fine. It's purely cosmetic. In fact, I... It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Why would I make it worse to fix it? than it was before. It's not fixing it. This is the proof that you need that, especially dentistry, but the medical profession is like fucked. Hospitals are like prisons. The reason is that normal and fixed, someone has to decide what that means. In some cases, that's very obvious. Like, oh, well, you would think, okay, well, having a tooth is obviously the normal and fixed version of not having a tooth, but this is clearly not normal or fixed. And who says, then having a not not having a tooth is such a big deal. It's not a big deal. I stopped noticing it. The only th reason I noticed it right at the beginning, when I hadn't learned to talk and make S and F sounds properly with without a tooth, that went away in like a week, probably less actually, and I didn't notice it, and it was completely fine. There was no problem. So to me, that was normal, and this is not normal. This is fucked. This is fucked. And it's only going to be temporary. So even if my mouth does adjust to this weird fucking angled fucked tooth, it's going to go away soon and I'm going to have to adjust to a new one. Because that's the worst part. To get a, a new tooth that actually fits, I'm, they're going to have to do a new mold and a new make a new tooth, which is going to cost 300 quid. I don't have 300 quid to spend on a fucking tooth. And when's this going to fucking fall out? In my fucking sleep, I'm going to choke to death on my shit. I don't want to choke to death on my shit. What the fuck is this? It's all fucking bullshit. I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for this when I fucking fell over bowling as a kid and knocked my tooth out. I didn't fucking need this. I didn't fucking need this. It's not good. It's really not good. It's not nice. It doesn't feel nice. You could tell, they should, I could tell they don't know what they're doing. Dentists don't know what they're doing. Don't trust doctors. Don't trust them. They're just health cops. Some, oh, they have some knowledge you don't know. The internet exists. Google it. If you, if, if, if you want to know something about yourself, and don't, just don't trust a WebMD. Just go to, like, Google Scholar. 
and find it out for yourself. It's not fucking hard. Go to Sci-Hub. It's not hard. It's not hard. You have a med... Oh, I have a med... That's what they do. You know, do you know what GPs do? I don't know if you guys even have GPs in other countries. General practitioner, you know, the type of person you go to. You're like, oh, I got something wrong with me. And then they refer you to another thing. They just Google your symptoms. It's literally true. Look it up. Don't even look it up. Look at what they do. They've done it in front of me before. They just Google your symptoms. There's no special skill or knowledge. Sometimes they're nice people. That's fine. But they, they don't have any magical ability. All of Western medicine depends on this, this like, secularized... Um, dehumanization of of the whole medical industry that doctors you know from everything about the medical profession from from the way doctors dress to the way the the hospitals are structured to the treatments you get to how you get those treatments everything about it is made to remove any personal element because it's seen as unprofessional or whatever right it's mo- it's it's mostly to remove the fear of death right if if you like, there's, there is no room for a doctor to, like, be a human being. A doctor can't be a human being. A doctor has to be a machine, because if it's not a machine, then, then, then the whole system falls apart. Doctors have to be dehumanised, right? They're wearing their fucking masks and their surgical visors so they don't even look like a people with their fucking uniform lab coats. You know, in the UK, no one wears lab coats. In the US, all doctors wear lab coats. In the UK, in other countries, they don't wear lab coats. In Mexico they do, and some other South American countries they do. But in the UK they don't. They just dress like fucking normal people. Because there's no... The only reason to wear a lab coat is, is for the fucking... Uh, it's for the theatre of it. It's, it's all a theatre. It's all a play. When you're in a hospital, you're literally... You're in one of those weird experimental, like... Uh, you know those experimental, like, theatre productions where you wander around and talk to the act... Or I don't know if you think you talk to them, but, like, you sort of follow the actors around the real space as they do their fucking part. That's what a hospital is. Except no one knows that it's a play. Except me. I know. I know. I've been cursed with knowledge. I don't know what to fucking do about this. I don't know what to fucking do about this. I fucked myself. What is going to come out? She said, I have no... She said specifically to me, I don't know when it's going to come out. It, but it's temporary. She said specifically. I've got the fucking thing. It's in my pocket here. I try not to dox myself too hard. It says, uh, bridge, you are, uh, it's one F, I can't read that, uh, only temporary, doesn't fit well. It says right there on my fucking all health assessment. Doesn't fit well, but don't fucking do it then. Just don't do it if you know it's not going to fit well. Just be like, okay, well, this isn't going to fit well, so so we'll just refer you to, to the, the, the... What the fuck is the point of this? What the point of this? I would have rather... If she, was, if, if she was, like, not an idiot, she would have, like, tested it before trying to fucking glue it in and not found out that it doesn't fit when she'd already put the fucking glue in my mouth. Fucking idiot. Brain-dead stupid bitch. Just don't do it in that case. What the fuck? How can you? How can these people run our society? Oh, support the NHS. This is support the NHS. I have to pay for this shit. There's no fucking socialized healthcare here. I'm paying for it. Which it's subsidized, but it's not socialized, right? <sighs> support the fucking NHS, my fucking dick, my cock and fucking balls. I ain't supporting shit. Fuck the NHS. <laughs> Fuck the NHS. Fuck TFL. TFL's Transport for London. They run the, the public transport. To Americans who have nothing, this is like, this is like fucking, a, 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 I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I'm just trying to think. This is like a... There's got to be a metaphor here. There has to be a metaphor here. I need, let me stimulate my brain real quick. It's like a starving orphan, orphan in Africa, looking at a like the life of a uh, uh, a young kid in like I don't know Compton, and thinking, wow, that looks like heaven. 
But then if you were actually... So, yeah, compared to literally starving to death, it's probably better. But no one would voluntarily be in like that... In a, in a situation like that, you know? That was not a very good metaphor, but I'm sure you understand what, what I mean. What you're coveting is the is like that's that should be still not acceptable. Like the NHS is great. It's great for what it is. Like a, a tax a free at free at point of use healthcare service is beautiful. It's great. But it doesn't fucking work in the UK, mostly because the Tories keep defunding it, right? And because of various systematic problems with what the healthcare, what healthcare even means in the West, right? Well, I say in the West, but it's the same in lots of other countries outside of the West, like Japan, for example. But I don't know what that was about. Like, to Americans, that's something crazy and amazing. Right, you can go to hospital and not have to pay thousands of dollars. Like, yeah, that is pretty great. But the actual system is, is flawed, massively flawed. There are huge waiting times, and doctors... Well, doctors themselves probably know what they're doing, but everyone who isn't a doctor doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. You go, you go to medical school for a couple years. Spend it's, Medical school is just... Like, they say medical school as if it's something crazy. Medical school is just university. It's just a, a special university that you go to. It's like, I go to music school. It's just university. What do you think people do? They just get drunk and party the whole time and study, cram for their tests. Like, that doesn't make you a genius who should be in charge of people's lives. No. Fuck you. Do you know how many nurses don't, like, they think because of it's all fucking rhizomatic man like the fucking drugs right drugs right and drugs will be another point in this video another video in this video will be about drugs but preface here foreshadowing epic foreshadowing uh like do you know how many people die because nurses think they're pretending at, like for drug seeking behavior and won't give them drugs happens all the fucking time that literally they just let people die because some nurse has decided that oh this person is just doing it because they want to get high or even worse just to, just oh this nurse has decided oh this person's just pretending for attention and they die and it happens all the fucking time and hospitals cover it up it look it up hospitals cover it up there are so many preventable deaths in hospitals just caused by people who are completely irresponsible because we have this myth that going to medical school somehow makes you prepared to, to make moral decisions. It doesn't make you prepared to make moral decisions. Going to medical school teaches you the, where the fucking femur is. It doesn't teach you how to be a decent human being. And who goes to medical school? Let's think about that. Who goes to medical school? What sort of person becomes a nurse? I'll tell you. Nurses are female cops. <laughs> if you're if you're a sociopathic male, you become a police officer. If you're a sociopathic woman, you become a nurse. It's a fucking domination over another person disguised as maternal instinct. That's what it is. It's it's the the desire for domination. Same with women who are really upset. Actually, all genders. I know why I said women. Same with all people who are... This is just a theory. I have fucking Freudian shit, right? People who are obsessed with keeping uh, small, cute animals, like little gerbils and mice, and, like small... Not like a cat or a dog, but like the smaller ones. The ones... That, uh, probably not rabbits either, because rabbits are pretty smart. But like basically anything sub-rabbit, right? Uh, but not bugs. Bugs is different. Uh, small furry animals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shit like that. I think... A big chunk of people who are really into that shit just wish to totally dominate another life form. That is the only reason they have it. It's like it's like a this this delusion that it's somehow maternal care, but in actuality, the deeper root is is socio sociopathy and a desire for, to dominate something. The same thing with nurses. Same thing with all this shit. Right. Same thing with everything. The, the, it's so easy to conflate care with 
with domination, right? Uh, and I'm sure we can get into fetishes with regards to that as well. Uh, what the fuck was I talking about? I got a bit distracted talking about gerbils. Um, dentists are bad. Healthcare, healthcare is bad. This tooth is bad. Um, yeah, oh yeah, public transport in London. I want to talk about that too. Like, most of America, they have no public transport at all. And so to them, the idea that you could just not own a car... Like, I, I don't own a car. I've never been like, oh man, I wish I had a car. Never in my life have I been like that, because I don't need it. There's trains that go all around the country, and buses that go all around the city, and underground trains in the city as well. There's no reason for me to own a car. It's just expensive, and there's loads of traffic. And to Americans, that's amazing. That's like, what the fuck? You just have public transport everywhere? Like, wow. And yeah, it is great. I actually love, from an from a, a purely... Ignoring a certain aspect of it, from a pure, if we, if we, uh, how do I, how do I take, from a pure standpoint, I love the tube. From a, an idealistic standpoint, I love the underground. Literally, I like, I, 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 uh, from an autistic standpoint, I love trains, I love the un London Underground. Uh, it's like an engineering masterpiece, uh, a um, civil design masterpiece, like the signage on the London Underground is so good so there's a couple stations that are dodgy but most of the time on the underground you or the tube i'll just call it the tube because that's what it's called most of the time in most tube stations the signage i'd say 99 percent of the time is is so clear so well constructed it's genius it's a it's it's so well done but it's actually shit like it's so over... Firstly, it's run by a company called TFL, Transport for London, right? And they're like... Like, they're a company, but they're not a company. Like, they're run by the government. It's like a government company. It doesn't make any sense. It, they run it like a business, even though it's a b government branch. It doesn't make any fuck. It's a terrible system, right? Because it used to be lit completely privatised. Back in the day when the tube was first made, each line was privatized like like the, the the different lines were owned by different companies it's the same if you go to tokyo today they have the same system where uh the underground and the the, the transit system is, is completely privatized at a certain point uh it was too complicated the government stepped in and bought up all of them and then it was just run by the government and then i think that was what happened if i remember correctly and then in the year 2000 they created tfl to like run the whole, which was like a, to run the whole thing like a company. And ever since then, fare prices have been going the fuck up. It's so expensive to get anywhere in London. It like, the tube is so expensive. Buses are cheaper, but still expensive. Um, and I mean, you can jump the barriers and do stuff like that. The, the barriers in London are harder to jump than in other places. Uh, or jump, I wouldn't recommend actually jumping them. Uh, there are techniques you can learn to get to get by there are certain like for example there are certain stations where there are, are, are ways to get down to platform level without tapping in with your card the problem being that that it's very hard to get out like if you do that you can't get out on the other end because you didn't tap in so you can't go through the barriers on the other end maybe if you were really polite to the station staff you could social engineer your way to let them out like oh it's not working i wonder why you know but like did you tap yeah i did maybe you could do that if you looked was like if you were dressed in a suit if you looked presentable that sort of thing um you could probably get away with that but it's a bit of a hassle there's better ways to get around it but let's play by the rules here without risking a fine uh it's expensive as fuck it's slow as fuck it's crowded as because it was built half the shit was built in the fucking victorian era right it's not good it's not good not good to an american who lives in a place with no public transport it's like wow but to to me it's got its problems it's got big problems um God, this tooth is so fucking uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. I can't n not think about it. It's like actually causing pain because it's jammed between these two other teeth. And to the dentist, right, who did this to me, I'm sure this is what's going on in her brain. 
she almost certainly blames me for this. She's almost certainly thinking, why didn't you get this done sooner, you idiot? Otherwise, you wouldn't have had all these problems. Well, to be fair, there, I probably could have got it done about, like, two or three weeks earlier than I did get it done. The dentist did, op like, they did open up a few weeks earlier than I did get it done. But what difference is that really going to make? And more importantly, even then, shouldn't you have checked before you tried to fucking jam it in? You should have. You should have checked. That's my counterpoint to my imaginary person I'm talking to. I think that's the end of this segment. We're going to do some difficult shit right now. For me. We're going to do difficult self-critique. Self, self-criticism, self right? Very important. I always say how important it is, and yeah, I've been putting this off for probably years. And so it's time for me to actually fucking face the facts. Face the fucking problem that I've set up for myself here. Face my own internal problem and actually work through it. I'm at the stage where I can voice it in work. It's been coming for a while. It's been, uh, now that I look back on it, I can see that I've been approaching this conclusion for a while. But it's now at the point where I can actually ask the question out loud and say, okay, this is, I've, I, I am now at the point where I understand the problem and how to solve it. Which is good. I am developing as a human being. And that is... Anime. What? More clearly, identifying as an otaku. Seeing, being an otaku, not just as something I do, but as an intrinsic part of my identity. It's bad. I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. I, I think it's a childish and, well, childish maybe is not the right word, but it's, it's immature. It's not a good way. This fucking tooth is fucking up how I say S, F, F. Oh, it's giving me a lisp. It's giving me a lisp. Fucking tooth. It's not how I want to continue my life, right? What it is, it's a cheat. It's a cheat. It's an easy answer to the question. It's an, you got the question, who am I? Who am I? And it's an easy puzzle piece. It's a cheat. It's just a fucking hack to put put this puzzle piece as a part of who who am I? The answer to who am I? Here's the puzzle piece. The answer is otaku. But in reality, that's just a bad way of understanding myself. It's it's and the reason I I have come to this conclusion and it reason it realized that it's time to make a change in the way I think of myself. In the the subject object dichotomy here is. <coughs> oh shit, I got corona, bro. Um, it's, it's this. Uh, what was I saying? God, I, my corona job threw me off. Whoa, there's resonance here. Sorry, this is probably, this, this is wiggling a lot. It's probably making you a bit motion sick. I should, I should sit down. So, uh, there was recently some bullshit, stupid shit, I'm not even going to get into it here, anime bullshit on Twitter, because if you don't know, uh, it's part of a larger migration that Tumblr, sort of, Tumblr banned, banned all porn, and the site basically died, uh, and it's like, essentially everyone from Tumblr has been slowly migrating to Twitter and making it fucking insufferable. I don't know why, I, I'm slowly weaning myself off of Twitter. That is another thing I'm doing, is I'm, I'm getting away from Twitter more and more, because it's, I'm, I'm not good with that. It's too, um, hyper-socializing. I thought I could play the game well, and for a while I was playing the game well, but it, it depends on what, the game, the rules are changing, and I'm, I'm not ready to change, I'd, it's no longer a game I enjoy playing, so I'm slowly distancing myself from that sort of thing. But, Regardless, let's get back to the point here. Uh, there's, there's, there's what I believe to be a, a psyop, at least partly, about um, like anime characters and uh, like age gaps in relationships, and it's basically like a, a, a strange pedophilia manhunt, witch hunt to people who don't exist. Like you make up a type of person in your head and you declare them to be a pedophile despite them not existing. Uh, 
<laughs> it's very strange. It's the sort of thing that can only happen on the internet. Pure, pure ideology. Pure ideology. But the most recent thing that's happened is there's this character from an anime I don't even like. I watched the first episode. It was shit. It's boring. I don't care about it. Called Uzaki-chan. Right? You've probably seen it. She has the Sugoi Dekai uh, t-shirt. Big tits. And a, a bunch of people, presumably from, from their art styles, I will get tell you why, what I mean, you can tell they're from Tumblr, have been redrawing Uzaki-chan, saying they fix fixing it, because apparently the proportions are all wrong in this cartoon character with cartoon proportions. Oh, I'm sorry, Bugs Bunny doesn't look like a real rabbit. you got to fix that and draw him realistically. What the fuck are you talking about? It's stupid, and it's even worse than this, because... Uh, you see what I mean? This is... Uh, it's very stupid, and in no way are these people right. But there's also stupid people who are defending Uzaki-chan, despite it being a bad show, and a pretty... not the best character design of all time. This isn't like some fucking Akio Watanabe type character design. This is like... pretty low-tier character design. So, any, everyone on both sides looks stupid. Like, there was one guy defending it, uh, saying it, it posted in Japanese, like, uh... Westerners on Twitter uh, always d d make our do do whatever, but like the Japanese he used was clearly Google translated because he didn't write Twitter in katakana. He literally wrote like uh, the the word that means the sound that a bird makes, like an actual tweet, like as in the word tweet, but translated into Japanese. Very stupid. He also used when he he said white people, but he literally said like. Um, white people instead of like uh, Gaikokujin or something like that he literally said like which doesn't isn't how they say it in Japanese either way he looked he made himself look stupid everyone's making everyone else look stupid the people who are redrawing Ozaki are basically drawing redrawing her to have the proportions of a white woman like Ch Japanese women and Asian women are just shorter in general they're making her taller because they think you're a pedophile or something if, it doesn't make any sense but either way that is not actually what's important. It's completely not important. It's like a, a couple of isolated events that are blowing up our proportion because that's how the internet works. One person says something stupid and then uh, everyone's like, whoa, this person said this stupid thing. Well, oh my god, this... And then people come defend it. It's very... It's stupid internet drama shit that I shouldn't care about at fucking 21 years of age. But I do. And why is that? It's because when someone attacks anime... I feel like they're attacking me because I've identified myself to even though I don't like this anime I think it's bad I dropped it and like said online to people that I didn't think it was very good I, and I don't care about the character at all still because I have somehow got a part of my identity that is it, it's not just something I do it's something I am it's not like I do I perform the action of being an otaku I am an otaku as a part of my identity, bad, because then when people do shit like this, it feels personal, even though it's not personal, and that is not a good way to live your life, is to feel personally attacked by dumb shit on the internet, it's not a good way to live your life, that is the key thing that made me realise this has gone too far, this, this has to change, I have to change my relationship with the understanding of what an otaku is, and sure, sure, as a reference to a Machinima ETC, which is now Internet Today, that no one will understand because I'm sure no one who watches this channel watches that channel. I don't even watch that channel anymore. I used to watch it a long time ago, as you can tell from the fact that I called it Machinima ETC, a company which no longer exists. Um, so why is it bad? It's not. It's it, it's the same shit where where with fucking people. Who, who dress up in, like, Handmaid's Tale outfits and go protest, or the same shit. It's, it's the same shit as people who just identify the world purely through the media they consume. Uh, and it's, uh, like, obsessed with Marvel movies, or, I don't know, uh, fucking Steven Universe. I don't know why Steven... I, I just have something against Steven Universe fans. I watched some of the show. I thought it was alright. I dropped it at a certain point because it was kind of boring. Uh... And I don't really... Steven Universe is bad. Um, 
some of the Steven Universes are Tumblers, some of the Steven Universes are SJWs, and some of the Steven Universes are Tumblr SJWs. That was a, a, a an endless jazz reference. I have to... My references are too obscure for the room. I have to explain what their references to. Back on point. Taking a little step... Taking a little step back here. Take a little step back here. Identifying... Oh, not identifying. I guess identifying. Putting yourself too, f bringing in too much of a, the, these external things, like you know those people, <laughs> you know those podcast hosts, the the ones that Red Lab Media are making fun of in that one video series, the Nerd Crew videos, that type of person that they're making fun of, like the the soy 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 Jack, <laughs> the soy Jack Marvel fan type of thing, uh, like. How is that that different from the obsessive otaku fan? There is a difference. I still believe that there is an epistemological difference here. That that the difference being the way anime is database, like the the consumption and community and everything around anime is so focused on databasing and and uh, analysis in that way, rather than uh, you know just just surface level, no meta text, right? That, that, that with anime fandom, the meta text is built right into it. That does elevate it a little bit above some other things. Not everything, but some other things, right? A lot of other people who who see the world way too much with the popular media they consume. And also the fact that anime is like a kind of a cult, a cult thing. It's not like a mass-produced, mass-media product. It is, if you're, if you're obsessed with, like, fucking uh, My Hero Academia or I don't know what's the other one Black Clover those ones um or your fucking I don't know smartphone isekai that type of thing then then it is but if you're like Kokoro Toshokan Bottle Fairy Mahoraba Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere like that is not making money. No one's making money from that. Well, maybe someone's making someone's making money. People are making money, but like that is not a mass-produced product. That is a fucking like purely there for a niche audience. It's you know I don't have to explain why anime is good. Anime is good, but it is related. That it's not different enough to excuse me. It's not like okay, but it's a little different. So I mean, I'm basically can wash wash my hands of this out damned spot out the out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, fucking, I can't I can't wash my hands of this completely. Like there is still responsibility there to be like an and yes, it is different and and. <laughs> Like, yes, it is different, and that doesn't excuse me. That doesn't... And it's just something I do. It's not something I am. I I simply am. You know, th th I have a poster. B. It, it's not a poster, it's a piece of fucking paper I wrote. I, I simply am. To, to talk about uh, Keegan's theory of adult development. I wanted to talk about this for ages. Oh, shit. Got a text message from my mum. Um, what the fuck was I talking about? I uh, keep losing my train of thought, it's terrible. Uh, I want to develop towards a stage 5 personality. I want to say, I want to be more fluid in my, my multiplicities, right? I want to be more fluid in my multiplicities, like that. As we all should be. And being obsessively into... Uh, not into, into is fine, you can be into it as much as you want, but it's about the way you perceive it, whether you perceive it as the subject or as an object, and I'm perceiving it too much as the subject, I need to flip my view into something that I perform, rather than something I am, uh, because I am not, uh, I am not that, I am just a little fucking creative nothing, I'm a fucking desiring machine, right, I'm nothing else. I have, I have, it's an ideology, it's an ideology, otaku is an ideology, being an otaku is an ideology, and it's a spook, 
and all the other buzzwords. I, th- I can throw any fucking buzzwords at you right now. It's the fucking... It's the society of the spectacle right here, mate. It's the society... It's, it's fucking CIA propaganda. It's all fucked, right? It's all of those things. It's a spook. It's a... It's fucking foozy razzy woozy It's nothing. It's ideology. It's pure trash kind of ideology, right? We don't fuck with that around here. I don't know if you knew here, but we don't fuck with trash cans around here of right, no IDs and no ologies, right? We throw our trash on the floor and then we burn the fucking house when we want to get rid of it. That's what we do over here, mate. So get your fucking trash can of ideology away from me. I'm busy snorting fucking pure fucking memes, bro. What am I talking about? What am I, what am I actually talking about? Anyway. That's what I'm saying. I need to flip it. I need to flip it. And that's the process. It's not, it's not, oh yeah, I just have to stop thinking about it. It's like, I have to, I have to go through the process of slowly catching myself out, distancing. It's not distancing. It's not going to mean I'm less of an otaku. It just means I have to do, think of myself less as, you know, I need to flip, I need to slowly flip the subject. I need to slowly depersonalize it. Is that well, I'm t- is that the right word? Does that make sense? I need to slowly m- just peel it up. Like, like when you get a new phone and you peel the, the plastic off the screen slowly to, to make it more pleasurable. That's what I need to do. I need to slowly peel the, peel the ideology off of myself. And it's not the last layer of ideology. There's pl- you peel it down, there's like 50,000 other layers, but I'm already like 20 deep. I'm already like 20 deep, which is better than a lot of people. And it's an ongoing journey. It's a lifelong journey. The fight against ideology. And uh, there you go. And some of you won't, won't like hearing this. Or some of you will probably just be like, I can't really argue that being an otaku is not an ideology, but I just like the ideology, so I'm just going to stick with it. And that is fine. If you just... That is completely okay. I, personally, I'm not... not I'm... The, for, cool, but I'm different, you know? <laughs> I don't want to have nothing like that. Because otakus are bad. Like, you don't want to be associated with those people. There was a time when it might have been cool. We might have been fun, but otakus are bad. Like, they, they, we can look, we can be conservatives all we want and look back at, oh man, if only I was an otaku back in 2005, man. 2005 anime was so much better than it is now. Oh man, I wish I could go back to the 50s when everyone was racist and the housewives were housewives. You know, that sort of thing. Same fucking bullshit. We can say that, and b- regardless of how true it actually is, like, in the 50s everyone was racist, and in the 50s, Women were, uh, like, more impressed, right? It's maybe true, but it's only better for a certain amount of people. Anime was, as I proved by the series 2005, anime was not better in 2005. It was still mostly trash. It was just trash in a 2005 way instead of in a 2020 way. It was not isekais. It was, like... I didn't even know what the fuck half of those shows are. Like, just bad. It was just bad. It was a lot of just bad stuff all the time. That's most art. 90% of everything is shit, right? It's, it, it's just how it is. Most things are bad. And good and bad anime everywhere. It's mostly the reason people like 2000, 2000s and 2000s. That kind of anime is not because it was better. It's just a personal, you know, it's aesthetics. It's nothing more than aesthetics, which is fine completely fine but i went on a bit of a tangent there aesthetic is narrative after all but what i mean to say is look at modern otaku right i wasn't an anime fan back in 2005 so i can't say but look at modern otaku right they're all fucking jodo's fans they're all fucking shonen fans they're all they're all fucking love fate they all love fate or they really hate fate for no reason just because they can't be born. They're, they're not like, oh, just, just okay, fine, just be into it. They, they, they either really love or really hate fate. Um, well, they, they've watched five anime. They only watch seasonal shit and 80s uh, and, like, like uh, Akira and Ghost in the Shell. Um, they don't care about fucking Moe. They don't, they don't care about my slice of lives. They, they might, but, you know, they don't... They don't respect the greats, man. They don't respect the greats. 
They've all got fucking Shintaro Kago t-shirts. Despite never having read any of his manga. And they don't play any fucking arrow gay. That's the key point. They only watch anime. They might read manga. They probably read One Piece. Although, actually, everyone I've ever met who reads One Piece... Oh, I was going to say that, but then I remembered Nate Bestman reads One Piece. So there are bad people who read One Piece as well. But, uh, you know, it's way too... It's dumb. It's dumb. You don't want to be involved with those people. You don't want to... Because it's all either 4chan people or Tumblr people. There is... Or Reddit people, even worse. Like, you give, like when 4chan people are the best option, that's when you know it's fucked. You need to run. You need to get away. Right? And that's not to say all anime fans are bad. I love talking about anime on the internet. I go on loads of image boards and talk about anime with people anonymously. Anonymous? Anonymously. Right? I'm there on my little tiny image boards with five people talking about fucking obscure shows no one knows, right? I'm there. We love it. Everyone loves it. But that's because it's a spook. Otaku has always been a spook, and it will always be a spook. There, There is no otaku. Otaku is a made-up thing. It doesn't exist. You're into anime? Okay. Are you a slice of life otaku? Are you a magical girl otaku? You're a shonen otaku? Are you a fucking light novel otaku? Elge otaku? Mango otaku? Uh, maybe you're only into... Um, R RPG otaku? That's a thing. Like, as RPGs? Are RPGs anime? Maybe they are. Maybe RPGs are anime. I don't know why I said that. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about half the time. Um, I just need to distance myself from this pure ideology. That's all I'm saying. That's all we're saying. It's a spook. Never existed. Never will exist. I'm saying this mostly to try and convince myself rather than to convince you. Uh, it's, it's nothing more than a word that describes a family of things. There's, it's an identity and I need to get that into myself. I need to understand that so I can, I can look outwards rather than be trapped in this hall of fucking mirrors. I don't know what I'm talking about, but either way, that's about what I wanted to say. I think some people are going to uh, disagree with me there, but go distance yourself from the otaku. Go distance yourself. I don't think that would work. I tried pressing stop with this, as if this is going to press stop, but obviously you need to use your finger. I was planning on finishing this video yesterday. It would be done in a day, done and dusted, you know? But uh, instead I got in a really long and involved Discord call with the Crabstack motherfuckers, and I uh, got very drunk and didn't end up finishing it. So, we're, we're doing all the rest of the video today. First, next, and also in the past, as you'll see. We're going to go back, back to the past Samurai Jack, you know? Um, first key point, quick, just a, this is a quick one, this is a quick point. This is the little, well, you know, not one of those 25, 30, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20, 1, 21 minute rambles. It's a quick one. Uh, internet musicians treat music like uh, elementary school, we call it primary school. You know what, I will use UK phrasing, and if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you're just stupid. Internet musicians treat music like primary school children treat football. If you play football in primary school, everyone just chases, there's no fucking positioning. Everyone just chases after the ball. The entire, both teams are just completely chasing after the ball, maybe except the goalies, right? And then when the ball eventually gets kicked, someone boots it to the other side of the fucking field. No one's there, and whoever did it just gets to score an easy goal, and everyone has to quickly run and chase over. Everyone gets exhausted really quickly, because they're spending the whole time running up and down the field instead of keeping their positions, you know? And there's no one, when, if you're in a sticky situation, there's no one to pass the ball to, because everyone's chasing after the ball. So... It's, it's a very bad way of playing. Very, 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 very short-sighted way of playing. And obviously, they're primary schoolers. That's what you don't understand planning ahead in a game like football when you've not even been alive for that long, right? But that's how primary schoolers play football. That's how I did it back in the day. It's how my school did it. There's some people that are much better than me at football, but I was not one of them. That's how people treat music. 
when someone when someone does something, everyone chases after the ball. It's like, oh shit, the hyper pops the thing now. Quick, jump ship, jump, jump ship. You you gotta lay your fucking guitar power chords over your 808s and have a fucking snare that sounds like donk, like like a t hitting a piece of metal. Dylan Brady snare, right? Oh fuck, oh shit, uh, polyrhythm, polyrhythm came out. It's in it's in fucking seven eight. Now we got to make all our songs in seven eight. Quick, run over here. Quick, run over. Oh fuck, cemetery. Cemetery's doing like fucking black metal. Quick, run over here, make black metal. Oh fuck, like what are you doing? Stop. Oh shit. Oh shit. Uh, fucking Parker and fucking the other guy made fucking jungle like arm and breaks. Quick, run over here. Oh shit. It's a fucking Alice Gas did fucking donk donk music. Oh fuck, put donks on everything. Run over here. And meanwhile, nothing's getting actually fleshed out because everyone's too busy running from place to place. No one has time to find their own artistic voice, you know? No one has time to work, work on themselves. Make something that will last for longer than a month while your fucking SoundCloud style is popular. You know, people are freaking out like, oh my god, don't use a fucking kick in your song. No, one, don't use kicks, don't use snares anymore. Just 808s and claps. And don't use kicks and snares. Oh, no, no fucking triplet hi-hat rhythms. That shit's corny, right? Like, boo. You're white. You're just being white right now. Do you, do you think the people who are actually good at making music? Do you think? Do you think fucking Young Chubb? Do you think Young Chubb was sitting there in his studio being like, "Oh, I can't put a fucking triplet with him. That's too corny." No, bro. He put fucking symbols on everything. Everything's got crap. Every ten sec, ten milliseconds, there's a new crash. That if and they're the best beats ever made. There's fucking bell sounds, and no one's ever topped it in the history of music. So, do you think Lil B is sitting there like? Oh, I'm not gonna fucking rap over a Daft Punk song because that'd be too corny. No, he's not sitting there doing that because he's Lil B. He doesn't have to worry about that shit. You have to worry about that shit because you, you're fucking running after the ball because you're fucking don't know what you're doing. Don't worry about that shit, bro. That's why you make Death Sign. That's why you do things like Death Sign. That's why you do kill yourself immediately. You don't have to do all that shit, bro. You just do what you you just you just do. You just make music. It's not running after. It's not fucking. It's not a zero sum game. You're just making music. What the fuck is wrong with you people? They're chasing after the ball like fucking dogs in a fucking dog race, hound race. Bitch ass. Be fucking Lil B. Learn from Lil B and become free. Become free. Uh, how do I start this? Should have thought about that before I press record. Okay. Imagine. Okay, let me actually let's start like this. A lot of people. You know, on whether they're supporting them or against them, don't understand where many traditional ideas come from. Why, uh, why m many more, let's say, traditionalist people believe what they believe? Why conservatives believe what they believe, and why people are against that sort of thing? They understand, like. They don't understand, the, they haven't done historical analysis to understand why it existed in the first place and why it doesn't matter anymore. Like, I use this example. The reason I was thinking about this is as uh, someone asked me, uh, why are people so against sex? And I was thinking about it, like, why, why, it's such a weird thing to have, like, such weird opinions. Like, why are conservatives and such, like, and not just conservatives, but, you know, a lot of people so like against promiscuity and stuff like that like see sex as sort of a taboo thing when it's literally one of the few like it not everyone obviously asexual uh, aromantic people shouts out uh, but uh, so most people tend to have sex why is it such a big deal well they haven't thought about the historical reason why it was a big deal. Let's take it back to like 2,000 years ago. Imagine you're a bloke 2,000 years ago and you have some good ideas about public health. You want to tell people to do something which is healthy, right? If you're living today and you have some idea about public health, you probably go to the government you probably go to the government, you probably be like, we need to put this policy in order, get it passed through government representatives, and then the government would institute this new law or policy or whatever 
or recommendation about public health, and there you go. But 2,000 years ago, firstly, things were very, very different. You have to remember, the concept of countries didn't exist. That's a pretty recent thing. And, like, governments having massive power over the people they governed, like, police forces didn't come around until the Industrial Revolution. The police didn't exist. People were like, oh my god, so we were, people were such savages in the past. They hanged people for, they hanged people for such, like, small petty crimes. Because almost no one got caught. The reason they hanged people for such petty crimes is because, the, the, uh, like, criminal law, there was, it was, like, there was no police force going around monitoring people. The, the government wasn't everywhere, there wasn't modern transportation, you wanted to get somewhere, you had to ride a fucking horse and to bed multiple days to get there. Governments in fucking, talk about England because that's what I know about, governments in fucking London, right, or, uh, or, um, Windsor, right, actually, you know, Windsor wouldn't have been for a while, so it would have been probably London, uh, what are you supposed to fucking do? Oh no, hello, someone's stolen me sheep. You know, they're not going to say that's a civil, that becomes a civil problem rather than a, a a criminal problem. Very few criminals got caught, didn't have forensics and shit like that. If you commit a crime, there's no fucking CCTV. That's why they hanged people. It was a deterrent. They, they caught like 1% of criminals and they punished those criminals as severely as possible because they only caught a few of them. And it's still the case today. People don't know this because the government doesn't want you to know because it would be bad if people knew stuff like this. But for example, in America, if you commit a mur- if you if you murder someone in America, there's a forty percent chance you get away with it. Forty percent in modern day America, crazy. No one people think like we're safe. It's just a theater. It's just a theater. Anyway. So 2,000 years ago, you're not going to go to your fucking government, because firstly, you live in a city-state, so who are you going to actually, like, there's there's barely any people you can tell, plus, who's going to fucking listen to you? There's no way to enforce it. There's no way. If you have ideas about public health or safety or anything like that, how do you spread those ideas the best way possible? The answer is religion. If you have a, a, an idea about uh, something that people ought to do, like a way people ought to live, it doesn't even have to be public health, it could be morality or something like that. You know, now we have lots of laws that are very easy to enforce and that the government takes that role. Back in the day, government wasn't, government wasn't, didn't, didn't fill the same role at all. It was a completely different system. You, the, you couldn't go to the government with something like that. That's not their job. That's, you know, the, the government, they were fucking feudal times right so the best way to spread your ideas is to is through religious doctrine and uh, so 2000 years ago uh, sex was very dangerous genuinely very dangerous people seem to forget this sex was a really dangerous thing firstly STDs not understood there's no, no 2000 years ago, there's no germ theory or anything no one knows what the fuck stds are and there's no fucking antibiotics you die if you get fucking gonorrhea you're dead right or your dick falls off or something like, bad very bad std is very bad of course they spread less often because people lived in less populated areas but still it's very dangerous um pregnancy and uh childbirth very dangerous for mothers incredibly dangerous people died in childbirth super super often and infant mortality rates were much lower like people children died with, uh, after being born much much more often uh basically have it uh, uh, yeah there's no condoms or anything i mean they they had some they they, they had a uh, condoms made of sheep's intestine but no one wanted to wear them because they were made of sheep's intestine very uncomfortable like you could do it as like a last resort but almost no one would do it there's no contraceptives of any kind except for that basically and and you know pulling out and timing it to one's menstrual cycle but you know that the, the, this shit is completely unreliable the unwanted pregnancies all that shit abortion very very dangerous at this time sex is genuinely a very dangerous thing if you're having sex, you better fucking know that you want to be having sex, and it's very hard to convince people not to have sex. Therefore, the only way to convince, to get these people to stay safe, is through religious doctrine, to say that it is immoral to have sex without, before marriage, to be promiscuous, that sort of thing. That is how you spread the idea. Now, am I saying that none of this was because of sexism? I'm not saying none of this was because of sexism. Of course, it was because of sexism as well. But that's the, his, the material reason 
why these laws existed, why these traditions existed, to be anti-sex, to be sex negative. Because historically, for the majority of human history, it just made sense. It just made sense. Now, why were people so homophobic in the past to that? I don't know. That is probably just, there's not any reason for it. They just didn't like the gays. Um, you know, I have... I have some theories. I don't know how many. Don't know people are gonna like them. Like the whole like, I think the 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 common the one people would jump to is that gay sex is more likely to spread disease. That's just not true. Like, th th that's just a myth. But uh, the, my theory is that back in the day, gay sex was mostly associated. Uh, obviously, I don't. I'm not an expert historian, but especially I, from what I know about the Greeks and the Romans, gay sex was mostly associated grown men having sex with, with young boys. Right? You can see why they would want to dissuade that. But I think it was mostly just homophobia. Either way, we have these material conditions, but then all of this shit happens hundreds, thousands of years later. We get the industrial revolution. We have proper contraception. We have proper abortion. We have, you know, uh, way modern medicine where mothers don't die in childbirth all the time. We have way higher, way less infant mortality rates that where children don't die as often. Like, it, there's no reason to have this, this same view anymore. So, opinions change, right? But they, they didn't, it's not like, they, it's not like, oh, this isn't, this is just a savage culture that they just believed it because they, they were stupid and savage. No, they had their reasons to do it. Like, they weren't different from us. They just lived at a different time. That's just how things are, you know. Almost everything you can think of has a similar basis that at one point, if it was a tradition, at one point it was probably really useful. There's probably a reason people did it. Nowadays, probably not so useful. Not always. Sometimes uh, traditions can be useful. I don't know of any, but I'm sure they exist. Like, uh, I know one. Uh, this is one I like to do. <laughs> this is my autism, right? Uh, you, have, you, have, you know, like, monks do, like, chanting stuff? Like, uh, my favourite one is nam myo ho renge kyo nam myo ho renge kyo It's from uh, it's Shintoism, Shinto, like, uh, Buddhism, Japanese Buddhism. Uh, nam myoho renge kyo to chant them. It's like a prayer or a chant. Uh, I really like that. Oh my god, what the fuck? A little bit of paper fell on my toe. There was a spider. <laughs> um, yeah, I love saying that. I, th I have a theory that all, that, that like religious chants it came from autistic monks who were using them as stims. Like, uh, you had, like uh, in Christianity, they, in like uh, the Greek Orthodox, they have prayer beads. And same in, in Buddhism, some places, they have prayer beads uh, where you like fiddle with these beads. They have the same thing in, in Catholicism, some places, like uh, rosary prayer beads. I was like, clearly, this is an autistic person who needs to stim, right? Shouts out my religious motherfuckers. Shouts out my, shouts out my autistic monks, bro. Like, think about it. Who's more likely to become a monk than an autistic person? Someone who could hyper-focus and learn all the intricate theology and shit. That's fucking what autistic people used to do back in the day. Shouts the fuck out, man. Who's gonna fucking spend all their time learning to all the intricacies of how to brew beer and make wine and shit? Because that's what monks used to do, right? Who's gonna spend the time to do that? You know, if you're not born into it, if you're something, you have to become a monk. Monk, right? Who's gonna spend the time to do that? It's autistic people. Monks are autistic people. I'm telling you, monks are autistic people, and that's why they have all these chants and and little fiddly things. It's they're all stims because monks are autistic as fuck. Why didn't they talk to each other? Why did monks take vows of silence? Because they don't need it. Because they're autistic. It's great. I love monks. Um, there you go. Don't know what that was all about, but uh, that was my thing about explaining why why sexism exists. <laughs> <laughs> Explaining why sex negativity was a thing for a long time, but it doesn't. There's no reason for it to be a thing anymore, cause cause we we got we got modern medicine, we got contraceptives and stuff. As long as you motherfuckers wrap your dick up, stupid idiots don't want to wrap your dick up. Just wrap your dick up. It's not hard. So this next clip is from like a week ago, ish. Um, it's kind of long. Uh, but there you go, it's from like a week ago. I just know that this is personal thank you. This is just me setting it up that it's personal thank you. Something is wrong. It's hard to put into words. I 
I don't even want to drink today. I drank too much yesterday. And the day before that, and the day before that. And I, I had a pretty, well not pretty bad, but worse than usual hangover this morning. So, uh, I wasn't going to drink today. But, uh, just got to I guess. Can't control what the universe has in store for you. Yes, I wrote this on my arm. Kind of faded. It says Jesus. To remind me who's really in control here. I cut all my hair off. Recently, my hair falls out in clumps. My hair's been falling out for a while now. Stress, but also genetics. My dad went bald when he was pretty young. I'm probably also going to go bald young. It's a shame, because my hair is one of my best traits. If you're new to this channel, you probably didn't see it in its purest form, but if you go back to my older videos, you can see when I had long hair down to like here. It's nice, curly, beautiful. One of my best traits, of course. Can't be, you can't be allowed to have good traits, so. Whatever. I actually like having my hair shaved. I think I'm going to keep it like this forever. It's way easier to deal with. You know, I cut this. Oh, including the back. Myself, with a pair of scissors. Looking in the bathroom mirror. And it's like perfect, it's like pretty good. Like it's even. Somehow I did the back without even looking. And it's like the same length as everyone else. I don't know how I did it. I guess I'm just a genius. Remember to drink water. Very important. I really want a cigarette right now, but I don't think I even have any actually. Check. No, I do not. Oh, I do. Oh wow, I have a whole pack. What is this? Reds? Camels? Interesting. Well, it doesn't matter, because I can't smoke them indoors and I'm not going outside. How do I explain it? I can't focus. I can't. My my brain's all foggy. My brain's all foggy. Um. Anxiety, just feeling on edge. Uh. Frustrated, just frustrate, like a. Frustration, but for no reason. Uh, sometimes it happens, I don't know why. And I just have to try and find out what the cause is. So, I ate some food, because I can't really tell what I'm hungry. I just have to kind of guess. So if I feel bad, it's like, perhaps I'm just hungry. So I have to go eat. So I made some eggs, because now... But uh, I've been eating eggs every day recently, and I think I'm kind of bored of eggs. So I tried to switch it up a little bit. But this happened. I eat a lot of eggs for breakfast um, normally. But uh, I used to have basically actually isn't my egg journey has been a long and complex one.
my egg journey has been a long and complex one, but I'll put it this way. Um, I was eating eggs with a lot of, with more of a Mexican influence in a, in like a wrap, in like a tortilla wrap. And then with like some, some, uh, pickled jalapenos, is that a lot? Yeah. And hot sauce and paprika, stuff like that. Um, and I've been having that almost every day, but it's kind of got, got a little boring. Also, the way I was making it, I was putting a lot of fat in it, like a lot of oil when I was cooking it because I was trying to do it. Doesn't, doesn't matter. But yeah, probably not the best for me. Just a lot of cheese as well. So, today I was like, well, just now I was like, I kind of don't want that. Especially, I don't really want something spicy right now. So I, uh, I removed a bunch of elements and it was just eggs and chives and, uh, salt and pepper in a wrap and I decided for some reason to put American cheese in it instead of some good old sharp cheddar but uh I didn't season it properly I didn't put enough salt in it I didn't put enough pepper in it it was kind of bland plus I had the heat on the pan too hot so the eggs were a little rubbery not ideal. Didn't make me feel better at all. Just made me feel like I was eating rubbery eggs. You, no one wants that. No one wants that. We're talking scrambled here, by the way. We're talking scrambled. Um, but yeah. But it doesn't seem to have helped anyway. So I don't know what the point of that was. Maybe I'm vitamin D deficient. That would actually make sense, because I take some vitamin D. Something weird about that pill. Oh, these are off. I mean, they're very, I highly doubt they go off properly. Whatever. It is what it is. Anyway, what was I saying? It's uh, 7 a.m. right now. No, last couple nights I went to bed at 10 a.m. Which means we can assume it'll be probably somewhere around 10 a.m. today as well. Um, it's hard to say, really. Why not anything will happen? But, uh, that's why I had to start drinking. So that's like three hours. And right now I can, I could pretty much just, I could just grin and bear it through this weird feeling. But when, when the lights go off and I'm laying down trying to sleep, I know it's going to be torture if I'm sober. So I have to get, I don't have to get smashed, but I have to get drunk enough that I can't focus on my own thoughts enough for them to bother me while I'm trying to fall asleep. The alternative would be to take a sleeping pill to knock me out quickly. They don't have any sleeping pills in it at the moment. So, alcohol it is. Or, yeah, I don't think other drugs do the same thing. Anyway. But yeah, I've been sleeping at like 10 a.m., waking up at like 6 p.m., 6, 7 p.m., 6, 30 p.m. But it's still breakfast. Breakfast is when you break your fast from sleeping. So it's always breakfast. Today, this morning, maybe it's my diet. This morning, for breakfast, 
which wasn't this morning at all. It was this after yesterday afternoon. But for me, it was this morning. I had a like a, t t a panini, basically, with just cheese and onion in it. I was pretty good. I haven't had cheese and onion for a long time. Cheese and onion, great combo. We're gonna have to eat more cheese and onion panini type shits. Toasted sandwiches, or as we call them in the UK, toasties. Uh, they're good. Cheese and onion, good combo. And then, but I, there wasn't really ma that much. It wasn't a very big meal. But then for, for the next meal, I also didn't have very much. So maybe I was just hungry, but I, this hasn't fixed anything. Maybe my diet's fucked. Maybe that's why. But I don't. I don't know what to eat this better. I mean, actually, that's not true. I've been eating a lot of fried food lately. I could probably, I could definitely cut down on the fried food. I think that's what I need to do. Maybe that will help me out here. It's these ones. It's these stomach bacteria. They're in control, man. It's Jesus and his stomach bacteria that are making me eat fried food, even though it's fucking making me fat. What was I supposed to say to them, eh? My, my gut biota, what am I supposed to say to my gut biota? What am I supposed to say to my gut, my, my stomach brain? I've been playing a lot of vision novels lately. Um, uh, Don't know where I was going with that. This one, I spent like a while looking for a decent time of this one. That I'm downloading right now. I don't know why. It doesn't have very good review scores on the VNDB. And it doesn't seem like anything that I particularly like. It, it's not like, oh, I have to play this because it really appeals to a specific autism I have. No. So I don't really know why, and it's pretty long as well, which means I'll probably just never finish it. I mean, I might finish it, I don't know. The problem with VNs is they're often really fucking long. Uh, which kind of sucks. I mean, it's kind of good, but it's, uh, I, I'm, I like to watch things all at once. Like, when it comes to anime, I like to... I, I tend to not be like a seasonal anime watcher. I tend to watch so I can try and math and shows and shit because I lose motivation after a while. Like right now I'm re-watching Gochu Monwa Usagi Deska on season 2. Pretty great show. Very good. Rewatching it in preparation for season 3 which is coming out next season, next anime season. Interesting, interesting. I don't remember the last time I left the house. I mean, I know logically what it was. It was to buy this. And since I'm almost out, I mean, I'm gonna have to leave the house again soon. Every time I leave the house, I seem to this seems to be worse than it was last time. But aside from going to the shop once every like few weeks to buy some vape liquid. It's been Five months, maybe five and a half. Actually, that's not true. I went out with a friend once in that time. So I'm not a true hikikomori. <laughs> maybe it's just cabin fever from being locked up in this fucking room for so long. Maybe that's the emotional feeling. If 
everything's gone wrong. Everything's fucked. Here's some latest developments. My headphones, you can see, they're falling apart. This thing, the foam shit is like fake leather shit is splitting open. I've had to super glue it shut, but I ran out of super glue, so this little bit is like splitting open. And it's only a matter of time till I just get bigger and bigger, and hopefully I get some more super glue in time to fix it. That's problem one. My keyboard on my ThinkPad was broken. I had to buy a replacement. Fix that. My Mac is still regularly broken because of a a manufacturing defect in the TCON board that I can't do anything about. And it's not covered by warranty. My vape is getting old and the battery is dying. It runs out of battery really fast now. But I can't really afford a replacement. Add to that, the my only computers are running Linux and Mac OS. So, I, uh, and all visual novels are made to be played on Windows. So I have to run everything in Wine. But, like, half the visual novels don't work in Wine. Like, I wanted to play Dracu Riot. That doesn't work in Wine. I wanted to play, uh, um... Fucking another thing by the same guys. I think they called it Yuzu Soft. None of that shit works. I wanted to play uh uh what was it called? And um fuck. <laughs> uh, Chaos Head doesn't work in wine. Uh and I tried to set the other time I tried to set up a a, a virtual machine, but uh, I fucked it up, and it was so chat, it took me like three hours to get it working, and then I found out that I'd done something wrong, and I couldn't connect to the internet properly, and I would have had to start to like go through the whole process again, and at that point, I'd gone through the whole process again like five times, and I, I just fucking gave up, I was told everything, killed myself, and then it was reborn as this current, no thank you that you're seeing right now. Um, oh yeah, and to add insult to injury, uh, I can't be able to get up and get it. My audio interface, which is the thing that I use to connect this to my computer, I fucking accidentally knocked it off my desk and the, the USB connector broke. So I can't even record bass anymore. did that. Bass is a really fun instrument. And the washing machine broke. I mean the dishwasher broke, but we got that fixed. Plus it's a, like a, a, a heat wave in the U UK right now. And uh, People in other countries make fun of the UK because uh, they don't understand what the word heat wave means. A heat wave is just, uh, it literally just means like a, a period of time where the heat is like uh, significantly above normal for an extended period of time. And that's different for every country. A heat wave in India is different from a heat wave in Iceland. It's still a heat wave. Because the infrastructure is built for the standard temperature. For example, all the houses in London, especially houses like the one I live in, like Edwardian, I believe, uh, they're built with like loads of insulation, double glazing along the windows, no shade, no natural ventilation, no aircon. None of us have, no one has aircon in the UK. So. Uh, the temperature that might be not not even a really a big deal for someone in another country is a big deal. It's not that bad though. It's been worse. There were, like a couple of years ago, there was a, it was way hotter. I have a fan, right? It's fine. I have my window open. It's not ideal, but uh, I survived. Hopefully.
That hit me in a weird way. Wow, that was weird. Like it hit my fucking, what's it called, the uvula or whatever. I'm not just drinking straight vodka to seem cool on camera, by the way. Um, <laughs> I used to drink beer all the time, but then at some point it hit me how many calories are in beer. And basically, I was like, I've been putting on weight for a long time, slowly, but at a certain point it became something I couldn't ignore. It was like, okay, like this is no longer, this is something I now have to actually worry about, especially as I'm getting older. And I was like, what's the biggest source of empty calories I consume? Probably alcohol. So I switched to vodka from beer. Um, and uh, the only mix that I have in the house is like uh, fizzy drinks, like Diet, Diet Coke or something, but that has caffeine in it. And I'm going to be sleeping soon. So drinking it straight is the solution here. And it's actually not so bad. Um, you ever have one of those times where you get like really, really fucked up from a particular spirit and then you can't drink that spirit again? I had that with vodka. That I had a I had a very intense experience, shall we say, with vodka. And I couldn't... Vodka just made me feel sick for a while after, so I just kind of assumed that I couldn't drink straight vodka anymore, but then turns out it's literally no problem. In fact, it's probably easier than ever before. Um, not that it really matters, but vodka is probably, out of all the, I mean, aside from whiskey, like some nice scotch or something, I don't really like cognac. I don't really like gin. I actually hate gin. I can't stand gin. Uh, what other vodka spirits are there? I'm sure there's others, but I don't remember them. It goes nice, nice, top quality whiskey, Isla, Scotch, then vodka. Because vodka, it just tastes of alcohol and nothing else. And it's cheap as shit. And there's no difference between, like, this Smirnoff. Smirnoff is not good. In fact, yeah, you just don't want Smirnoff, really. There's not really any reason to buy Smirnoff. It's, it's, but it is what it is. It doesn't matter. And uh, apparently, um, vodka, because it doesn't have many impurities, uh, it gives you way less of a hangover than other alcohols. Like, I heard through the grapevine that red wine is the worst. Like, red wine has loads of chemicals in it that give you a really bad hangover the next day. And vodka is the best. It has the least of those chemicals. I don't know if that's bullshit or not. But in my experience, it seems to be pretty accurate. Because whenever I get fucked up on red wine, the next day I'm dying. Uh, although red wine is quite nice to drink. I'm really not ready to go back to university in September. That reminds me, I need to call my university to tell them that I'm coming back. Because they, I thought they was automatic, but apparently not. So I, I guess I'll do that in a couple hours. I don't think they'll be open to a couple hours. Um... But yeah, I'm not ready for that. I don't know how I'm going to deal with suddenly being on a regular sleep schedule plus having to be around other people and go outside every day and maintain a basic hygiene standard. Well, not every day. 
I honestly have no idea what the fuck I'm gonna do. I guess I'll just have to Gambari Masu. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I decided that from now on every year I'm going to cut myself um, somewhere. Probably on my fingers, actually. That's a bad idea. Somewhere else. Just a small cut. And then I'll, I'll time how many days it takes for that cut to heal. And then the next year I'll do the same thing. i time it. I don't know why. I don't know why I decided that. I wanted to see if it, how much aging would affect the time it takes for injuries to heal. But now I'm thinking about it. It's kind of stupid. I, I don't think I ate a, a single vegetable today. Maybe that's why I feel bad. I didn't really feel like having vegetables, though. Like, good about them. And onions is a vegetable. Onions is a vegetable. Has some onion. I had almost a whole onion. <laughs> almost a whole onion. I'm the healthiest guy around. Hmm. It's not comfortable. <laughs> I can't get comfy. I need more alcohol. I'm drinking quite slowly, but I don't want to get too drunk. I just want to get drunk enough to you not know, have to be. I just want to shift the direction. You know, I just want to shift the direction. That's all I care about is shifting the direction. Strange things are happening inside my body. I wish I had a heads up display. I wish my eyes would have symbols on them, and I could see. Oh, you're hungry. Oh, you're tired. Oh, you need vitamin B3. Oh, you need to eat more protein. Oh, you need to eat more. Oh, you haven't done enough stretching, and your muscles are atrophying in your left pinky. Oh, you've been over using this muscle. You, you need to fix your posture so you don't spasm. Something like that. Just little warnings. Instead of having to fucking guess it every time. Everything about me is broken. My tooth fucked. My gums receding. My hairline receding. My eyebrow scarred. My eyes slowly losing it. My brain slowly losing it. My ears getting clogged up with wax every six months. I have to get them pay 80 quid to have a guy come around the house with a vacuum to suck them out. My toes are fucked, I've got flat feet, so I can't walk. <laughs> I can't walk long distances because I got flat feet. My hips start to get fucked, which means my entire legs are fucked. And this fucked. My body doesn't work. My heart's fucked. My lungs are fucked. Soon enough, my liver will be fucked. My arms are skinny. None of it's good. Every time I try and work out, no matter how casually I try and do it, no matter how intense I try and do it, no matter what tactic I take, I give up every time. I can't motivate myself to work out. It's just got no entertainment value. I don't know how anyone else does it. I guess people just value different things. I can't even focus on reading. I And I like reading. Everything is nonsense to me. It's all just fucking information flying at me from all angles. Maybe that's fun. Maybe I need to take a... I don't know, man. It's all very strange. A while ago, I was having crazy manic episodes and swinging between mania and depression like crazy. Now it seems like there's no mania. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna uh, hold on. It gets really hot during the daytime while I'm asleep. I'm grabbing a sheet because the duvet might be too much. Don't know yet. I haven't gotten to that point yet. Guess we'll find out. How's my my download going? I suddenly got worried today. I realized I'd never use a VPN while I'm touring stuff. But apparently, people. Uh, ISPs in the UK don't really care about that so much compared to America. 27 minutes ETA. Interesting. I haven't made a video like this in a while. My channel kind of switched directions. Talking about nonsense instead of talking about me. As we all know, I'm the real important thing here. I'm the through line. That's me. Through line. What do you think about this framing? This. I'm pretty good, you know. I'm pretty good at what I do. I'm good at making music. I'm good at making music. Mew, mew, mew videos. I'm good at making mew, mew, mew videos. Uh, that's what really matters in this life. No, it's not. No one else cares about that. <sighs> I'm gonna go hunt a fucking wild boar. I don't wanna be stuck in my room. I do wanna be stuck in my room. I don't wanna be stuck in a world where there's. I wanna live in a society. <laughs> I wanna. I wanna roam the fucking Mongolian steppe. Actually, like I, I say that, but I actually probably don't. It seems like a lot of effort. And I bet there's a lot of social games you got to play when you live in like a small community, like a tribe. you got to be very careful what you say around that sort of thing, right? Like if I went into the street right now and just like, I don't know, went into the street, took my shirt off and showered, fuck, fuck John Cena, fuck John Cena, and started, I don't know, Banging something against the sidewalk, making loads of noise. Fuck John Cena. People would probably look at me weird and then go on about their day because London and crazy shit happens in London all the time. They go around dressed in a fucking, I don't know, bunny outfit, like a bunny girl. <laughs> like a bunny girl. No one would even question it. Whereas if it was like a tribal society, everyone would know me. You don't even have the freedom to do that, you don't have the option to do that. So, maybe there are some advantages to living in cities. Then again, there's loads of disadvantages as well. Maybe, maybe the only solution is human extinction. Maybe. Who's to say, really? Who's to say except me, because I know, and I'm right. <sighs> Don't talk enough about here on this channel about human extinction. The Human Extinction Project, that's what I'm going to call myself. <laughs> Benjamin's Dragon Millionaire. I'm doing this, by the way. There's another good one. The good one. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just improvising that. I don't know why I had. I don't know why I felt the need to improvise that. The other two, this I do all the time. And this I used to do all the time when I was a kid. This this one, I'm. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a stim in the same way the other ones are stims. 
and also it keeps changing. I don't know what I'm doing. That's a classic. This is a good one. Um, I suck at going this way. I'm way better going this way. This way. Something like that. I don't know what this video even is anymore, man. I don't know what it was to begin with. What is this? Who am I? Who are you? Why are you watching this? I made a video about witches on TikTok. It got like 4,000 views. Probably more. Why? Why? What, what's the world coming to? The fact that I made that video, and, I, and so many people in the comments were like, yeah, I'm a witch, and so and so and so and so. It's like, how, I feel like, I feel like we're not bullying people enough, you know? I feel like, I feel like we need to bring back some serious bullying. You shouldn't be able to just go out and say you're a witch without, like, being bullied for it, right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> bullying <laughs> like I don't know the widespread belief in magic the the weird like the weirdly prevalent modern like it's recent they they want to say shit like oh this goes back to my indigenous ancestors and then they're like worshipping fucking Celtic gods doesn't make any sense like I don't see you fucking talking about your fucking voodoo, voodoo. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not fucking doing voodoo, bro. You're not doing fucking juju. I know your parents are Nigerian. You're not doing juju. <laughs> you're doing fucking. You talk about the Fey. Fuck is that? Fey from Ireland. It's just bullshit, mate. But uh. What was I saying? Oh yeah, the fact that the fact that so many people have decided that magic is real, it really adds to the like falling empire vibe. Like, <laughs> if you look back in like in history of empires that were failing, fully empires fall. Always like magic shit. People praying like spirituality shit gets big because you feel like you have no control over anything and that's the point I tried to make in my video it was like so what well, I'm gonna get this straight witches you're, you're, you you thought there were these crazy powers beyond human understanding and your immediate reaction was I must control this and use it for my own gain that's that was what I said in my video like doesn't that say more doesn't that say more about you? than the people who are making fun of you. Uh, but no one seemed to catch that, because no one watched past the first two minutes. They just saw the title. Um, very strange having a video like that, that got views outside of its intended audience. <sighs> strange. And then, you know, I made other videos. I made loads of other videos. Like, I'm, obviously this is not a job. This is like, unlike my music, I don't care how many fucking views these videos get. It doesn't affect me at all. Um, so like, it's not like I, it, so imagine it was a song, right? I, at this point I've come to terms with it, I don't care anymore, but for a while there when I was making music, it was like, man, I spent fucking four months making this album and I spent two, I spent to two hours making this song and the song has so many more plays in the album. What the fuck? I hate myself. Why do I even try? Whereas now, I see that's, that's obviously just part of the fucking game. That's just how it works. And I've figured out how to like actually tell what's going to happen. So like, I knew Encycle Futility is not going to do well on SoundCloud. It's not a SoundCloud type album. It's a Bandcamp type album. I knew that. I made it on purpose because I knew it would be a Bandcamp type album. I'm going to post it on SoundCloud anyway because why not? Uh, but I knew it wasn't going to go do well. I knew if I made a song and I titled it 
the fact that I have autism makes me superior to you. It's that's the equivalent of making a YouTube video called You Won't Believe What Happens Next. These two epic people tried doing, yeah, you know, it's like a clickbait title. Put Mimi thumbnail anime girl on it. Works every time. Is it like, I understand that now. I didn't understand about that. But with YouTube, it's like I don't care. <laughs> so, I'm like, I, I get, I'm not surprised that The Sacred Cow, which is a series I spent like ages on, is like way less popular than a random rant about TikTok witches. I like, imagine if this was something I actually cared about. If this was like a YouTube channel that I was really putting my whole effort into and something like that happened, I'd probably be fucking pissed off. Uh, I'm pretty proud of the sacred cow, I must say. I must say, this is the first video since then that's been, like, not talking about another topic. Uh. What time is it? Seven thirty. I used to have a, uh, on my phone many years ago, a really long MP3 of Star Trek The Next Generation bridge ambience. I used to play it through the headphones when I went out, so I wouldn't get freaked out. It's really nice. Star Trek Next Generation. It's a great TV show with great sound design. Great sound design. I played um, uh, Sayana Uta recently. That had some great sound design as well. Not amazing. Not amazing. For a visual novel, for the ones I played, most of them don't use sound to like the full. It's all. It's almost all text and some minor visuals, and most of them don't really care about sound. It's just like some BGM and a couple of sound effects. But Sayana Uta felt like a more of a gazumped kumsvark in that there was attention paid to every aspect. It was also a much tighter script than any other visual novel I've ever played. But it was very Ubuj again. Um. And that has its own problems. But it was also very Lovecraft, which is kind of sick. You all know about Sayano Uta. I don't need to sit here and explain the appeal of Sayano Uta to you. You will not. This used to be black, you know. You can still see the specks of black paint. Black, black paint. That was a Death Grips reference. But uh, over the years, it has turned silver. I can hear the sound of children, which means it's time for me to go. 
the fuck out. The worst thing about summer is having to have your window open, because then you can hear all the noises that other people are making. It's so bad. No one should ever have windows. We, we should all live in the yellow submarine. I fucking hate the Beatles, man. No, the Beatles never did anything good. What did they even... They never made a good song in their fucking lives. This isn't a joke. This isn't a joke. I genuinely believe it. What's going on here? Why is so much fucking... It's all fuck shit, man. It's all fuck shit. Uh... I stopped practicing throat singing at some point. I was getting kind of good at it, but I stopped. Nah, I don't have any more. What time is it? 7.41? Almost 8 o'clock. Are seriously children crying? Already? Really? Really? Why do they do this to me? Why do they do this to me? They follow me around. It's my least favourite sound in the world. I hate children crying. I can't fucking stand it. I want to fucking... This is... This is a... I don't know what this means. Like Bart Simpson. Like Homer and Bart. From The Simpsons. What's going on with this fucking video, bro? This is fucking nonsense. The goal of the Hikikomori. Oh, good morning, by the way. I just woke up. Which means I have an epic fucking deep voice. And also I just took a bunch of caffeine. So hopefully it kicks in. I get cool deep voice and plenty of energy. I feel very strange. Since yesterday, like... I, some, like, some hour yesterday, I started feeling really strange. I don't know if I'm sick or if I just flipped the switch from mania to depression. But I, I don't know what is going on. I don't think I'm... I don't know what is, what is this feeling, I don't understand, but I have this cool voice because I just woke up, I get it, my voice is one octave deeper to do lines from Emperor Palpatine and shit. Anyway, the goal of the Hikikomori is to radically forget that you exist, to radically forget that you have a body. It's beautiful. If you can manage it, it's amazing. And at this point, you know, in the past, I've always had to preface this with, like, uh, by the way, I'm not sure I really count as a hikikomori because I still go to university and blah, blah, blah. But at this point, it has been, I actually tried to work it out yesterday, over seven months since I went outside except to buy cigarettes or to do, like, something I had to do, like to go to the dentist and get my tooth fixed or to go to the doctor's one time. Every other time I've been to, not cigarettes, to buy vape and alcohol from the shop. That's the only place I've been. And even if we look at the Hikikomori from media, like NHK, he goes to the Konbini from time to time. I think that counts as still being a Hikikomori. So this is like, I know some people have it worse. And, uh, you know, trying to fucking play the fucking... That, like it's a fucking competition who can stay in their room the most and piss in the more bottles than the next person and shit who can who can have hide the shit draw from their mum for as long as possible nonsense but in the past I've always had to be like oh I know I'm not a true hikikomori I'm just hiki adjacent but now I feel pretty confident in saying I uh, yes I'm a hikikomori at least at the moment, I am, and for, for the foreseeable future, I will be, because uni is starting next year, and I'm, I'm doing online classes only, so there you go. Um, that, was a weird, that wasn't a weird tangent, that was just annoying. Anyway, the point of the Hikikomori lifestyle, lifestyle. It's a subculture, right? It's the it's the end of subculture. That's my theory. Oh god, do you, do you remember World as a Fuck? Do you remember World as a Fuck? I made two episodes. The first episode's really good. The second episode isn't quite as good. Uh, and the first episode isn't even that good. It's just well edited. One day I'll I'll continue that series. But the next episode was going to be about how because uh, you know the last episode was Cyberpunk is dead. Uh, when punk is dead, it was never alive, right? It was about how cyberpunk is shit, and punk is shit. 
the next episode was going to be the next movement is the anti-movement about how hikikomori is the ultimate conclusion in like capitalist realism of of all youth subculture and and that sort of thing how uh it's sort of the if hippies are the, the thesis and punk was the antithesis then hikikomori's is the synthesis right uh you know the 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 hippies had this this like drop out kind of mindset life sucks drop out type of mindset right uh go join a commune they well hippies the, the you know the, some people call them the new communalists that was a thing uh right but the, those kind of flopped communes they they didn't work very well they often turned into cults and we all know the history of the hippie movement well i don't know if we all do but there you go uh, and, you know, punk was the opposite of that. So hippies was all about, was the new communalists, all about communal lifestyle. And punks was the exact opposite at first. Now, this it's, confu- it's complicated because punk has meant a bunch of different things over the years. Uh, like, the, the attitude of punks in the 70s, in, like, uh, you know, Sex Pistols era, Ramones era, like, early, early, like the, like, the first few years, like, I'm talking the first three years in Britain only, uh, actually, in America too, I guess you can count like Iggy Pop and stuff, and the Ramones, and the early Dead Kennedys. Uh, that was one thing, almost distinct from what it evolved to be by the time you get to like minor threat, black flag type of situation. Uh, like, um, the the early punks were literally a response to the failures of the hippie movement. That they 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 didn't do th- like. They purposefully, um, like, for example, uh, didn't do, like, LSD and stuff. Even though they had access to it, they purposefully avoided it because they saw it as hippie shit. They purposely did mostly the speed and vitamins and uh, sniffing glue uh, because they saw that as hippie shit. They, they purposefully, av- like, framed their lifestyle around a radical nihilist individualism, which... Uh, failed because you can't really have a mass movement based on nihilist individualism it, it flops and so as it did especially when it, it get, becomes corporatized and you know that everyone's signed to a major label uh so uh eventually you had bands like uh the clash had more political lyrics i mean there was always political lyrics but it was more like a um in this in the in a nihilist in like an anarcho nihilist my ears are really pinned back I never noticed that. Like, my ears don't stick... You could even... Look, I have no ears. <laughs> um, like, it was more of just, like, a, a shouting at authority rather than a... I mean, there was Crass. Crass was, like, the beginning. But, but then by the time you get to to the, the sort of DC hardcore scene, punk had evolved into a, a straight-up, like, leftist political movement. And I, I was I remember watching a documentary about it, and it was saying, like, one of the reasons the DC hardcore movement collapsed is because by the end, each of these, like, the free concerts that would be put on, it would be... It became more about the politics than the actual music. It became more of, like, a, a politics fundraiser, and, like, uh, they would have people speaking, and they would have, like, all the merch, the money from the merch would go towards... Pol- political like organizations anarchist organizations charities stuff like that and it became so much about that that the music was kind of less important and that's one of the main reasons that the scene died uh but, yeah it, like uh the band that dave Grohl was in before he was in nirvana i forgot what they were called were basically like the last good good decent like dc hardcore band um, and that's kind of why hardcore is so shit now. It's because it, it like flipped around to be like, oh, like they bounced too far in the other direction, and now it's just all macho posing and shit. So I went. This was not what this was supposed to be about. This was supposed to be about hikikomori. This wasn't supposed to be about a history of DC hardcore movement. Anyway, but I'm talking about the beginning of punk was an antithesis to hip to hippies. It was actively an antithesis to the hippie movement uh it was radically individualist it was nihilist that like they they had seen that the hippie movement had, had failed like they they hadn't instilled the change that they thought they would and so they were radically like i don't give a fuck i just want to drink myself to death and sniff glue and fucking die and listen to the shitty music like the point was like shit 
yeah, yeah, right? And then where was the the, the synthesis? Well, the 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 you might think, or, or the you know, this is kind of the the failure of dialectics and shit is that it, it, it once you have historical fucking um what's the word hindsight you can you can easily piece this together a very clean picture that never really existed um uh so like i could very easily make a really solid argument that grunge was the synthesis i could also really make a solid argument that early house music was the synthesis that like the summer of love in in 89 was it 89 87 88 i don't remember uh in in england was the the ultimate synthesis of of punk and hippie movement uh although i don't think that i think that the summer of love was mostly a revival of the hippie movement not a synthesis with punk um although there was elements of that um I, you know there's a billion things you could there's a billion music musical movements you could imply uh that it was you, you did uh fucking like industrial music you could say industrial music was the synthesis even though that's i don't think that's true at all i think industrial music is something different um like there's a billion things you could talk about but um i'm talking about not the musical side but the ideological side uh, maybe synthesis is not the best word for it just natural conclusion is that it went from like it's, it's people trying different ways to drop out. One of them was like, let's all drop out together and live in a little house called a commune and we'll all do drugs and we'll listen to Indian music and we'll fight the Vietnam War. And then it was like, let's all drop out, but I don't know what we're going to do. Who fucking cares? None of this matters anyway. Um, fuck you for even asking that's the important part about punk is like who cares fuck you for even asking that that's why it was completely uns unsustainable uh and you know post-punk was you know there was a, i watched a documentary about joy division once and it, it uh i forgot who said this it was i think it was the label manager of factory records uh, like the guy who founded factory records he he was like um uh, punk could only ever say fuck you but eventually some people wanted to say we're fucked and that was post-punk, uh, right, but, uh, the hickey side of things is even more ridiculous, because it, it's completely unsustainable, unless you have some, un they, like, if you're hickey, you have to have income from somewhere, otherwise you starve to death, so you have to have income, and that normally is, like, either your parents, or the government, you're either on benefits, or you're, living with your parents if you're living with your parents you're still living with someone like neither it's very strange it's not not sustainable it's just like both of those options are gonna have to end at some point the only option that that allows you to live as a hiki forever is the very rare option of uh like you make money online somehow in which case you have the very rare type of person who's a hiki but not a neat uh I guess that technically is me, because I make money online somehow, although not enough to sustain myself. Um, but yeah, like, being a hickey is naturally unsustainable. Uh, you're good, like, again, okay, NHK, he runs out of money from his, his parents stop sending him money, he has to eat, like, a, one packet of noodles every two days or whatever. Like, it's not, it's inherently unstable. But that's the, the nihilism of it, is it doesn't matter, because by that point you've forgotten you have a body. <sighs> that's the point, is to, tr to attempt to transcend through forgetfulness, through isolation, that you don't have to face the reality that you exist, but by simply avoiding... Um, the other, the ex like, um, um, you know, you ever, you ever heard of, you ever, <laughs> yeah, you ever heard of self-recognition through the other? Um, as this bloke, I think, 
Anyway, it's not really that important. I don't know, I don't know why I brought that up. But uh, by depriving yourself of reference points, by intentionally depriving yourself of reference points, you lose the context that allows you to define yourself easily and essentially undergo, un undergo, undergo a, a sort of ego death, but a, in a more physical way. Like, uh, especially if you if you want to take it really far, you can like remove all the mirrors from your house and shit. Uh, like you you undergo an a, a an extreme sort of ego death because in if you if you have an ego death from taking I don't know five meo DMT or something, uh, then you have or or whatever and then DMT is probably more likely to cause an ego death. I don't really know much about DMT. Uh, if you have an ego death from 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 some sort of psychedelic experience, right? Uh, then the problem with that is that at some point you return the psychedelics wear off and you return to your body and you may no longer see yourself as an ego but you still have to deal with the fact that you exist in within society and within uh, the perspective of others who will treat you as if you have an ego um whereas if you're a hiki even if you you don't get that initial push that that destroys your self perception that's your self conception of your 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 what's the word like your fractal self recognition the self recognizing that it doesn't exist but something has to be there to recognize that it doesn't exist you know what i'm talking about you sort of uh like if i don't exist who's telling me that i don't exist to that that you don't get that moment uh like you don't you don't get that visceral uh, like paradox awakening but you get massively the other side no one is ever ha no one ever has to tell you that you exist you 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 simply are it's it's the most pure way of being you simply are you there is no there is no you there there, there doesn't have to be if you're you surround yourself with anime and manga and visual novels and video games you you're 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 this cat you're watching these characters now you're playing this character now you're watching a different story now you're you look around your walls and it's covered in anime girls these aren't anime girls but whatever uh your your, your life is screens you see screens with, with different stories projected on them different narratives different life lives lives there there's no reason to even there's no, there's no, you know, you go on, you go on one website, you go on, you go on 4chan.org or whatever, and you're posted anonymously. There is no you, you, you switch over to another website and you you have a different persona. There's, there, it's, it doesn't have the initial fl flipped switch, but unlike a DMT or psychedelic inspired ego death or whatever, there's not the problem that you have to deal with the fact, the, the existence of other people. You don't have to deal with that anymore. You lose this illusion of the self and you simply become that is uh, the point and it's also completely unstable because there are certain problems with the human body you have to eat you have to sleep you have to piss you have to shit that's the biggest problem and uh you know sleeping is is not so bad because sleeping is you're not conscious while you're doing it and it's it's kind of adds to the dreamlike mystique so we can push sleeping to the side but the fact that you have to eat and shit and go to the toilet th those two things they are the only things that temporarily break the illusion even if you're pissing in bowls you have to piss and you have to be reminded that you have bodily functions you have to drink water you have to eat food you have to be reminded that you have bodily functions. If if, if uh, the once once people can transcend the need to to shit and piss and eat food and drink water, then we'll have a proper hikikomori. But until that happens, hikis don't exist. That's why uh, we've only so far only proto hikikomoriism has been discovered. Uh, what the fuck am I talking about? There you go. I think that's I think that's a good way to, way to end it. Do I have anything else to say on that subject? No, I don't think I did. So you may have seen nine anime. Um, not nine anime. Sorry, kiss anime. Kiss anime died recently, very recently, as when I'm recording this. Um, 
you don't know, Kiss Anime is a, an illegal streaming site for anime. Uh, oh, fuck. No chives. We're out of chives. It's okay. Um, when are you never going to? So, Kiss Anime went down. It was the biggest, as I understand it, the biggest, most popular um, anime streaming website. Right? And uh, it got taken down by copyright holders and never coming back up. Now, this is great and sets an amazing precedent. Why do I say that? Not because information doesn't deserve to be free and copyright infringement is bad. Everyone knows I don't give a shit about that. In fact, I think it's good. But it sets a good precedent. Maybe in the future, all the anime streaming websites will get taken down. And I say this as someone who streams anime 90% of the time. Because even the slightest technical hurdle is enough. Okay, imagine if you had to go back to torrenting anime only, right? Imagine if all the major streaming sites, if, if, if all the major streaming sites got taken offline and, and the only way to watch anime was to torrent it. That would literally cull tens of thousands of, of normie anime fans. Just that tiny technical hurdle, even just Kiss Anime going down, I think will literally, like, probably about 10,000 anime fans. Let's say less. Let's say, like, at least, like, in the Five, half, half of the 10,000, 5,000 range or more, right, are going to be culled just because they can't be bothered to look up a way to find, to stream new anime. Maybe some will survive, Maybe, many, many, many will survive, but this will kill off the normies who don't care. And if all the streaming, if the only way to watch anime was to torrent it, normies, normies, especially Zoomers, don't know how to torrent. And even if they do, they might not like it. Like, shonen fags, who are fucking watching a show that has, like, 200 episodes, are not going to want to fill their computer up with 200 episodes of a show. People don't even, like, downloading a program out that isn't your web browser to, to do something is such a technical hurdle for these people that they won't do it. And it will, it will cull. It will be like a population culling. It will be beautiful. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but we can we can pray, we can hope, right? Did I get the button out? No. Oh, shit. Look, this is a failure. I've got the plate. That'll be an important part. This is exactly what the Western anime fans need, right? Just this, a slight technical hurdle. That's always been the key to making something good. The internet was better when it required some basic knowledge of how to navigate it. Not everyone, like, it wasn't... Basically, it's, it's like a... It's like they say in, in China, right? The Great Firewall in China. Everyone seems to think that it's the government, like, um, like everyone hates it, or it's the, it's the government trying to suppress information, and it is that. But a lot of people in China, I know this. I, I'm not saying this like second hat. I've I've seen this opinion shared widely. A lot of people, Chinese people, think it's a good thing. Why? Because you have to know how to get. It's not that uh, it's impossible to get out of the, the Great Firewall, to get on the outside of the wall. 
but it all but it's slightly hard it's quite hard to find a way to download a VPN or whatever or use Tor in China like it requires a minimum of technical knowledge and so the the idea is that people who the people who um, know how to get on the other side of the, the firewall don't bother sharing that information because they it's like it's like a, a means test you know it's like a it's like a way to ensure that only the people who deserve to be on the other side get to be on the other the other side right only the people who are already smart enough to understand what a VPN is have the right to use the internet. And I don't support that from a government standpoint, but I can actually I can understand where they're coming from. That a lot of Chinese think that's a good thing, that these people shouldn't be on the internet, you know. Uh, anime should be the same. And the other thing is, even if it doesn't, even if this doesn't like. Uh, even if the opposite happens, even if instead of these uh, Zumo anime fans having to stop watching anime because they don't care about it enough to do the research, even if the opposite happens, even if instead they just start torrenting, well, Zoomers don't torrent shit, right? They stream everything. Zoomers don't know about torrenting. And knowing about torrenting is a, is a good thing. So, at best, so this will teach loads of Zoomers how to talk, which is also a good thing. So honestly, even though I stream anime, I only talk about anime if I have to watch, if I'm, I'm planning to watch it in a place where I'm not going to have internet. Like I used to talk about anime to watch on the way to school. But even then, right, I would happily go back to Toronto. Do you understand my point right now? Even though this seems like a bad thing, it's actually a great thing. Hopefully, hopefully all the streaming sites get taken down. And the normies, we get out. And the whole girls with a time machine, boys with a time machine meme. Dumb, stupid meme, but boys with the time machine. Here's what I'm doing. Step one, I'm learning Hangul Korean. Very, it's very easy language to learn. Learning Korean. Go back to the 1980s in my time machine to Korea and start to South Korea and start a legitimate punk countercultural movement. Just really start. Any legitimate countercultural movement that gains any sort of traction, thereby destroying the existence of J of, of uh, K-pop, or at least making K-pop like anything but homogen, hom anything but totally homogenous. At least having any nugget of fucking yang in their yin, like any fucking nugget of yang in their yin. It's not gonna happen. I mean, it didn't happen in real life. There, it, the Korea, South Korea is completely culturally homogenous because they got American culture after punk, right? And they didn't have any option to have a counterculture. They, they, they just never happened. It wasn't how their, you know, Korean society is organized is very, I hate this word, but collectivist. It's very, um, it, respecting the older generation is the, probably out of all the older, all the Asian, like East Asian countries, Japan, China, and Korea, respecting your, you know, in Japan they have the senpai kohai system, in China they have a similar thing, but in Korea it's the most, uh, like, respect your elders is a very, very important part of the culture. Um, <clears throat> uh, and so, starting a countercultural movement, like, it, it just never happened. It, it's just, it's not in, doesn't, doesn't work for, for Korea. Well, it didn't, but it could. They just, I, I, I just hate Koreans. <laughs> I hate Korean culture. It's, it's, it's literally just all of the worst bits about American culture. It's, it's gonna collapse. I mean, eventually, it's any sort of hypercapitalist system will eventually collapse. 
but when it collapses will it like the collapse won't necessarily be any good because it'll probably collapse into a channel like system or a Singaporean system like I mean it's closer to Singapore right now so who knows I'm not fucking geopolitical fucking expert who could tell what's going to happen to South Korea in 50 years time but I just hate fucking K-pop and not the music I mean the as in what it represents, the cultural homogeneity it represents. If you go to Korea, there is no counterculture. There, it doesn't exist. It literally doesn't. It's like, you know, people people uh, talk, like to talk about North Korea, how there is no difference between the, the official line, like the government line, and what people think. It's not like there, there is no such thing as going, like, like when people were crying at Kim jong ill kim or song whatever i forgot uh funeral and people were like oh they're crying because they got snipers aimed at them no that's just what it is there there is no difference between like what the government like it's that sort of culture there it's hard for a westerner to imagine but there is no counterculture doesn't exist um like it as a uh culture it doesn't exist there is things that go get like for example everyone knows the DPRK has a huge grey market economy, like, uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're basically, like, agorist capitalism type of situation. Um, like, that happens, but there's no culture attached to it. They don't have the culture that, you know, they can't have the counterculture. They just have, like, economic stuff and, you know, other things like that. So in South Korea, it's the same thing, but, in, but instead of... Uh, you know, uh, Jush is Jush, Jush thought. <laughs> um, it's uh, hyper capitalism coming from America. <sighs> um, I don't know how to explain it. It's like they only got, they didn't get a punk movement, mm-hmm. and they don't, un- they never, un- they don't understand. They only got pop. It's like, uh, it's a cargo cult. It's a cargo cult, right? They they got the fucking aeroplane crashed there and some American, you know. It's a cargo cult. South Korean culture is one big cargo cult. Um, and so I would go back to the 80s and I would start a punk movement of any kind because it doesn't exist. Um, and it can exist because Japan, as we all know, both Japan and China have similar cultures to Korea. And Japan had a huge punk movement and a huge noise movement which grew out of that, which means that J-pop is way weirder. And, you know, there's loads of great Japanese music out there. China has a crazy fucking noise scene. Crazy, like, even though the Chinese official line doesn't want it to be this way, there is loads of great countercultural movement coming from China, from hip-hop to noise, experimental, avant-garde stuff, like, modern, contemporary classical type of stuff, to, like, metal, black metal, you can, anything you can imagine is coming from China. It's a huge fucking country, a billion people over there, they have all sorts of crazy music. Um, Korea has none, it doesn't exist on the map, there is just K-pop. It's just K-pop, or, like, when I say K-pop, I don't just mean the music, I mean the aesthetic, the entire k-pop ethos the the way of dressing the way of speaking the way of acting the the cult the, the ideology the, the ideology of k-pop is is homogenous in a way i've never seen in any other country uh and even in like you might think that doesn't make sense that like because korean culture would be so hostile towards punks that like a punk movement would never survive there's punk movements in more hostile countries. There's a big punk movement in the Philippines, which is literally a dictatorship. There's a big punk movement in Indonesia. Like, lots of Asian countries have big punk movements. But not fucking Korea. Um, even the anime they like. They like they like One Piece and popular shit. They don't even like the fucking good anime. Come on, bro. Korea bad. Korea bad, and I'm going to fix it by introducing punk in the 80s, like it happened in Japan. And uh, it'll be great. It'll be great fun. Princess Plunderphonix, aka Ethernet, this is my realization, is the exact opposite person.
to Ulalilia, the exact opposite type of autist to Ulalilia. Uh, no, I will not explain further. No, okay, I will explain further. Um, Ulalilia is very, like, um, very, uh, pro progressive. Very much linear, pro linear progress from, like, bad childhood to good later and make very obvious and few high effort works like two books and a video game that's never been released and another video game that is like more of like a proof of concept and then some videos that's Ulalilia Whereas Plunder is like, here's an album, here's an album, here's an album, here's a drawing, here's a drawing, here's a drawing, here's an album, here's a drawing, here's a YouTube video, here's a YouTube video, here's a YouTube video, here's an album, here's an album, here's a drawing, you know, constantly. Uh, Lilia is all about, like, video games, whereas Plunder never plays any video games. Um, Lilia is, yeah, as I said, all about progressing beyond childhood, progressing, like, getting over his fear of blue water and stuff and uh, putting himself in uncomfortable situations whereas Plunder is all about regaining the, the comfy that once existed in order to like further further himself right like to, to further himself towards a greater you know uh, singularity of comfiness right completely different um, yeah uh, Ulalilia only eats three meals, 80% pizza, 10% uh, hamburger helper without the hamburger, and the rest is random. Whereas Plunder eats lots of different stuff, although that one's a bit tenuous. <laughs> Most people eat lots of different stuff. But also Ulalilia only ate one big meal in the middle of the day, whereas Plunder eats regular meals, I think. Um... I had more, but my brain suddenly fogged up. I, I can't decide why. I think it might be because I haven't eaten any vegetables recently. I think one of the reasons I started feeling bad recently is because I, I haven't been eating enough vegetables. I think I need to eat more vegetables. I, I actually think it's having an effect on my brain because I'm not eating enough vegetables. But I'm not sure. It may be something completely unrelated to that. Who knows? Okay, so... Horizon in the middle of nowhere, it's like this, uh, it's very, it's well known, it's like infamous for being incredibly dense and complicated. You've got to trust you to read something like that. Yeah, exactly. So, so, good. Good uh, so I will now explain the, the, the premise. The, this is the, like, do you know what law means? L-O-R-E? Law. Law, like, uh, the history of the world, essentially, like the world building type oh, of right, stuff. Okay, right. okay, so... Uh, at some point in the distant future, humanity, the human race, like um, ascended to the heavens, right? Okay. Yeah. It's not clear what ascended to the. Well, okay. It basically, it's like simultaneously they literally uh, like got in spaceships and went to try and colonize space, but also like metaphorically they ascended to the heavens. They like became like gods, technologically advanced enough to yeah. ascend to the heavens, right? Uh, but something went terribly wrong while they were uh, ascending, and uh, they didn't have enough resources or whatever, and so they had they were forced to turn back. Humanity was forced to turn back to Earth. Uh, in the time that they've been gone, most of Earth had become almost entirely uninhabitable, right? Yeah. Uh, completely fucked. To put like. You do love your certain implements, Oliver. Yeah, go on. Uh, so. I like spatulas. Is that a problem? No, Is it illegal to like spatulas? I'm so angry with these lemons. I mean, I've got my money back. But what the fuck would you give a customer a lemon that's fucking yeah. got no juice? <laughs> so, um, uh, when, when, yeah, when the humans get back from, from ascending, they find that Earth has been rendered almost entirely uninhabitable, except for a small place, a small section, which is basically where Japan is. Right? Yeah, I know, right? So, uh, they, they, they call this, this area the Divine States. 
Yeah. Uh, but however, there's the entire population of Earth that is here, not, and they're not all going to fit in the divine states. So they use their technology to um, create like a pocket dimension above yeah. the divine states called the harmonic realm. So the, the, the pocket dimension is called the harmonic realm, and the land within the pocket dimension is called the, the uh, harmonic divine states. What is that? It's no idea. It's a metal part. Yeah. Straight. So the so uh, it's very cold, though. the people like <laughs> Jack, basically how it works is that everyone goes back to wherever their country is. If you're from Japan, you went back to the to the divine states. Yeah. And if you're from anywhere else, you went and lived in the harmonic realm where there was plenty of space for everyone, right? Yeah. Okay, so that happened. Everyone's chilling. Some of them are living in the real world, in the material world, some of them are living in the harmonic realm. It's all chill. Yeah. And they're like, right, well, that we failed at ascending to the heavens. Now we've got to try it again. How are we going to get there again? So they decide the best way to yeah. uh, the best way to, to get to the state of technology where they're able to ascend again, to try and breach the heavens again, is to recreate all of this, basically retrace their steps and recreate all of history up until that point. Okay? Yeah. So in order to do that, they create a book called The Testament. Yeah. Um, which is basically a history book that describes all of human history. And they use some magic technology to um, put a limit on it so it only shows the next 100 years because otherwise people won't be able to read too far forwards and gain too much power, right? Yeah. So basically, okay. it tells you what's going to happen and what you're supposed to do in the next 100 years. It's described as a walkthrough for history. And so starting from, uh, starting from uh, year zero, as in the birth of Christ, yeah. starting yeah. from the birth of Christ, they, re they basically remake all of human history. And so all of the nations uh, um, in the, uh, the world, which is now the harmonic divine states and the divine states, uh, are, uh, they, they recreate the countries that they represent. So, for example, uh, there's Japan, which is uh, Musashi. There's uh, England, which is still England. There's um, uh, the Ottoman Empire. Well, it's complicated, but... Uh, That's Turkey. The, the Ottoman Empire is, um, is called KPA Oda. Uh, then uh, KPA Talit. No, Can sorry. PDA, PDA Oda is the Ottoman Empire. Oh, um, PDA Oda is the Ottoman Empire. KPA Italia is Italy. Hexagon Francaise is France. Um, all of it. Um, Thanks. There's a lot. There's the United African Federation, I think it's called. Um, anyway, so they re they're recreating history by acting out the parts in the testament in order to try and get back to the point where they can say. Then, something terrible happens. Uh, so in Japanese history, there was a period in the real world, in Japanese history, there was a period called the Nambok Chor period, right? Yeah. And this was a, a Just what, essentially, feudal or something? Fe it was in feudal times, and yeah. it was all of the feudal states that Japan was broken into went into a huge civil war after the emperor died. Oh. Uh, everyone was vying for power. And it was a huge civil war, and now... Do they have any power anymore, the Emperor? No, it's just, it's like it's a yeah, it's, it's a... Well, they, she has power. She, same, same thing same, with the Emperor. Yeah, Technically yeah. has power, but it's right. basically just a figurehead. Yeah. Um, but anyway... Very in, expensive in, in, figurehead. So, after they were recreating the Nambok Control according to the, the, the Testament, um, because it was such a violent war, um, yeah. it, it, it led to the destruction of the harmonic realm, what's called the, 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 the harmonic collapse, right? Yeah. So, because it obviously keeping the pocket dimension open is very difficult, and during a war they fucked up and the harmonic realm collapsed back into the real world. Yeah. Uh, some parts of it were destroyed, some parts of it merged with the existing land, uh, and everyone was fucked, everyone was furious. They were like, what the fuck, you fucked up. All of the other countries blamed the Japanese, yeah. uh, the, the, the people from Musashi, uh, for the, the collapse. And then there was what's known as the Harmonic Unification War, uh, where all the other countries had a big war with Japan because they blamed them for the, the harmonic collapse. Have I have not got an open rosemary? I haven't seen one. Oh, maybe I used it. Um, so... Oh, I have got it open. Wait, you're gone. It's uh, just very full. So, uh, where was it? Harmonic Reunification War happens, right? Everyone's pissed with Japan. Uh, which was then called the Divine States. Uh, the Divine States uh, was renamed to the Far East. Um, 
and it was pushed into basically a tiny section and all the other countries and all the other nations di divided up the land of what we would know as Japan into their own little states. So all the different regions rep now represent different countries because they're, remember they're trying to recreate history according to the testament. Yeah. Um, so now, uh, but, but of course, uh, they wanted to basically completely wipe Japan off the map. But because there was no historical moment according to the testament where Japan was killed by all the European countries and stuff, yeah. that uh, they couldn't do it. So they, they weren't allowed. So instead, they basically pushed Japan into this tiny island. And uh, of course, according to the testament, these wars never happened. The, the harmonic reunification war never happened. So, uh, th which means they can't do it if they want to recreate the testament. So, uh, to get around this, as like a, after the harmonic reunification war, uh, because they're all now living in close proximity, in order to get around the restriction that uh, historically they wouldn't have interacted or um, had wars with each other or and stuff like that. They uh, make a loophole, which is that they make an academy for each country, uh, and the academy now uh, runs essentially acts as the state government uh, and military force, even though on paper they're just a school uh, or an academy. Uh, so there's a government and there's these academies, which are really the ones doing bureaucracy and especially warfare. Okay. So um, now we're getting close to the the the, the um, present day. Do you remember how I said uh, that the testament only shows the next hundred years? Yeah. Well, a hundred years is almost passed, and the testament hasn't refreshed since then. It should have refreshed, but it didn't refresh. So I think this is we're approaching, for some reason, in around sixteen hundreds, the testament is stopped refreshing the next hundred years, and so everyone's like, "Oh fuck, the world's going to end because there, there's no nothing to happen next," uh, and everyone's panicking because they, they think the apocalypse is coming. And it probably is. Uh, so, it's this is the book you're going to be reading. This is the well. This is the book I have been reading. Mm. So, uh, remember Japan or the Musashi was was collapsed into this tiny area on, on the continent, right? On the divine yeah. on their far east. Uh, so Japan has basically had all their land taken away by all these other powerful uh, powerful countries after the Harmonic Reunification War. And uh, they're forced to live in, there's only really two remaining settlements. Uh, everyone else is part of what's known as the Testament Union. Uh, the Testament Union, a union of people who are dedicated to recreating the history through the Testament. Um, but Japan and Musashi is not part of the Testament Union. Um, uh, so the only two places Japan has left, or, the only two places left in the Far East territory is um, a city called Mikawa, which is where Tokyo is right now, a yeah. city. Mikawa is like a neutral state, uh, and a floating city, which is on board like a floating, like, and by floating I mean in the air. Oh. A big floating, like, air, like, ship. It's, 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 it's like a like a spaceship. You, you can think of it like a spaceship, but it's not in space, it's in the air. Uh, can, you called, can you take the rubbish out? I will. Uh, this big floating ship. But bring up the, bring up the squad bag, because it's clean. This big floating ship about two kilometers long made up of eight different ships, uh, which is called uh, the Musashi, right? Yeah. The ship's called the Musashi. Um, and um, because that ship, they're supposed to be, a, uh, they're, they're, they're like, have, they're supposed to be a country, they can, so they can't just stay still. They have to make GDP somehow. So they go around the world, uh, they go around the uh, Far East trading with other countries, but they are not allowed to go into any other country's territory or that would be an invasion. So they can only go on the borders between countries. They can only fly on the borders between countries, like over the borders between countries. And it takes about one year for them to go all the way around the Far East. Uh, and so, yeah, does that sound Pretty sense. Okay, so so, so 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 that was the prologue. So that was the prologue. It's the prologue. That was the prologue. Now we can get into the plot. Oh my god! Why do you think these books? I'm just gonna read my shit. Okay, now. So remember how I said that was the, the, the countries are run by these academies, right? Yeah. Well, one of the restrictions put on Musashi by the other countries who were pissed at them after the Harmonic yeah. Reunification War was uh, that the that you wouldn't be allowed to be in an academy after 18 years of age because technically, it's, in other in every other country, 
uh, like you're allowed to stay in an academy however long, so they can have whatever governments they want. But they don't want Musashi to have whatever governments they want, so they impose that law on them. And uh, so Musashi's government or Musashi's uh, Musashi's academy is called Musashi Ariadus Academy, and uh, these are the students in the, the final year of high school, essentially. So yeah. There's 17 year olds who are going to turn 18 next year. So the most powerful students in the country, yeah. the, what could be called the, the governing body. And this all happens in one chapter, all of these people are introduced, by the way. Okay, so um, Shiro Jiro is the treasurer, Heidi Ogaz, uh, uh, Chiki's like obsessed with money. Oh yeah, I didn't even explain magic exists. Uh, magic exists. Oh. That's interesting. Um, it's complicated, and I haven't gone to the point where they fully explain exactly how magic works yet. I have some stuff like that I understand. Yeah, we like, love uh, magic. So. In, in this universe, there's a there's a along with all the other fundamental particles of nature. So you know your um your quarks and your protons and electrons. Yeah. Well, protons are made of quarks, but electrons and quarks and stuff like that. There's an extra in this universe. There's an extra fundamental particle, which is called the, it's called ether, and it essentially is called the particle of contradictions because it allows contradictions, that's how magic is allowed to work in this world, um, but there's, each person sort of, like, depending on what country you're from, what family you're from, etc., what you'd like to do, you have different magic systems, so Shiro Jiro's magic system is according to money, like, he's very obsessed with money. Well, yeah. Because he's the treasurer. He's the treasurer. Uh, Heidi or Gazvela is the his assistant. Uh, uh, Oryo Tora is the teacher. She's like a very skilled warrior. In in the first chapter, they like all try and chase after her and hit her, and no one can do it. Uh, then there's Margo Naito and Naoga Narizu. Uh, uh, Margo Naito is a is a descended angel. Uh, oh yeah, there's also lots of different races. Did I explain that? There's not just humans. There's loads of different fantasy races. This is just. There's loads of different this, fantasy races. You know this book so, all about. It's just got all of the terrific eyes. You know, you I'm not even halfway through the first, the first book, right? Oh, um, oh is that a whole series? They're fucking massive. And the, oh, is that like J.K. Rowling type like, thing? It's longer than Harry Potter, significantly, I think. I and probably be better written. Well, most and no are. plagiarism. Um, <laughs> so, so, I, uh, so yeah, Margot Naito is a is, uh, a, uh, a descended angel. Uh, whereas Naga, Naga Naruse is a fallen angel, um, because they're angels, they have wings and they can fly and they can do some. They they, they have like a, a mid range magic form where they, they fight from like not super sniper range but not close combat, yeah. uh, which is useful for, for flying around the battlefield. And also uh, they happen to be in a relationship. So who's the author? I don't remember his name. Oh okay. Uh, then Are you just reading this online? Oh, that looks nice. I downloaded PDFs. All right. Um, it's a fan translation. It's not officially translated into English. Oh, right. Some fans translated the entire thing. Oh, my God. That's a lot of work. I know. Um, for free. And just put it up for free. It's crazy. Uh, that looks nice. That guitar title on the back. It does. Uh, I'll skip that one and come back to it. Tuso Neshenbauer, uh, she, he, he's the sector, secretary. Did you have to write this down? Do you remember it? That's all the names. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so, so Tucson uh, Neshimbara, he, uh, oh yeah, did I tell you this has been adapted into an anime as well? Of course. Yeah, but only the, only the, the, there's only two seasons of the anime, it doesn't cover very much of the book, um, as you can imagine. That's how I got into it, it's because I watched the anime. So I know that Tucson, he doesn't really come into, he's only really important in season two, where he has a fucking poetry face-off with um, William Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking sick. It's like my favorite part of that whole thing. Uh, anyway, uh, 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 oh, don't worry about him. <laughs> um, oh, wow, look at that garden. Then there's a uh, Tenzo Cross Unite. He's like a ninja. His magic is all about ninjutsu, like he can hide his, his, his presence and stuff. Uh, but also, this is how complicated the, the this is how deep the universe so is. Okay, so do you know what kanji means? Kanji, I've heard of it. Kanji is one of the three alphabets in Japanese. It's oh, the yeah, one that's, that's like Chinese, right. where yeah. each symbol represents a word instead of a sound. So, if you translate, so cross unite, right? If you trans, if you romanize that from Japanese, you can pronounce it as cross unite, but you could also pronounce it as cloth unit, right? Yeah. And then if you retranslate cloth unit back into kanji. The kanji for cloth unit can also be read as um, 
at um, Hatari, right? And Hatari Hanzo is the name of a famous samurai in, in Japanese history. You may know him from Kill Bill. Do you remember Kill Bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when she goes to get the sword? Yeah. And the, guy, and she, and the guy's like, this is an Atari Hanzo sword. Yeah. That's who they're referencing. He was a real uh, yeah, sumo guy. Wrestler. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Definitely not sumo. A, a, a ninja. Oh, like ninja. Oh, so very um, fit. Yeah. Uh, well, like a Definitely shinobi. not a sumo wrestler. Yeah. Anyway. So that's, that's how deep it is. That's why his name's Cross Unite. Like, it's a reference because he's a ninja. Uh, he, he, he wears a mask all the time and also uh, underneath his clothes his body is covered in scars because of intense training. I only know that from the anime, I haven't gotten to that part of the book yeah. yet. Um, but then there's uh, Kiyonori Ukuyaga. Uh, this motherfucker's half dragon, he looks like a robot because dragons in this world, the dragons exist for their robots. Um, or like they, their scales are made of like metal and mechanical parts. They they're flesh inside. Um, then uh, Ito Kenji is an incubus. He look he looks like he's just like pink and naked all the time. Uh, oh God. You know what incubus is, right? Yeah. It's the male version of a succubus. Uh, Nenji Nenji is literally a ball of slime. Ooh. <laughs> Don't worry about Amazing it. Amazing author. Yeah, I know, like, right? What a, what a mind! What uh, a, what a then there's Nate, Nate uh, Mitotsudaira, Mitotsudaira uh, who's a girl with the name Nate, I don't know. Uh, she's pretty cool. She, she, uh, I didn't write a very good description, I can't really remember who she is, but I remember what she looks like. I don't remember what she does. I know she uses like chains to attack people, um, but I don't really remember much about her or, or doing that. Uh, Please forgive me. Then there's uh, Noriki, he's like a boxer. He also shows up in season two of the anime, I remember him. Uh, uh, then um, Tomo Asama, uh, she, is, uh, she has a fake eye, like a robotic eye, yeah. uh, which is a different color from her other eye, because she's an archer, that's like her, her, <laughs> her magic, and she's also the daughter of a Shinto priest, and so her magic is that she uh, app appeals to this Shinto god and says like, if you make my arrow hit the target, then I will give you an offering of so-and-so, or I will meditate and pray to you for so-and-so hours. That's how she does her magic. Very cool. Uh, then, uh, Persona. Persona, literally, that he's just a really strong guy. He's just really buff. Like, he's just got loads of muscles, and he uh, wears a bucket on his head and doesn't talk. Um, Suzu Mokai, she's blind. Um, she wears bells on her uniform, and she modified her school uniform to have bells on it so she can hear when someone comes past her. Um, uh, she's very, like, intelligent and, like, but quiet. Uh, then, uh, oh, if, as if this wasn't confusing enough, here's a confusing thing. There's a character called Musashi, even though the fucking ship is called Musashi. There's also a character called Musashi, and the character is the captain of the ship, Musashi. And she's like an automated, uh, like an automaton. Then there's um, Mitsuki Sanyo, she's the teacher of the other class. Uh, Masazumi Honda. Um, Masazumi Honda is the daughter of like a very powerful family, but the way that family works is that the, the leader of the family has to be male. And so her, her parents thought that she was going to be a boy, but when she came out, she was a girl. And so they tried to, uh, because they wanted her to be leader of the family, to be, to be the next heir, they basically made her undergo gender reassignment surgery. Oh my so they, God. they forced her to get a mastectomy, right? So she has no breasts. But then uh, they had a son, and so it never finished. So she just had a mastectomy, and that's it, and not the rest of it. Um, then, uh, where was I? Uh, oh, yeah, then there's. Oh, there's a fucking lot of people. He barely shows up. Uh, oh my god! How many characters? But most importantly, the main character... Yeah, none of this is the main character. The main character is... Oh my god, this is not the main character! No, this is the main character. He's a guy called Aori Tori. Uh, he's basically just a fucking idiot. Like, he's literally stupid, but he also happens to be in charge because, because the government put him in charge. Like, the governments of the other states make him be in charge because he's such an idiot and they want to control him like a puppet, but he's like... The whole thing is about him, like, oh, everyone underestimates him, but actually, he's very determined and 
uh, stuff because he's in love with a girl called Horizon, which is where the title comes from, Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere. A girl called Horizon who died five years ago. Spoiler alert. Horizon died five years ago after getting run over by a carriage, carrying a fucking lord from another country. Uh, she died. He chased after her but couldn't save her. Then, uh, but it turns out, something special about Horizon, I, I, I don't know what it is yet, but... Did she come back from the dead? Well, turns out her soul was put in the body of an automated doll, uh, like an, uh, not an automated, like an automaton, basically. Yeah. Her soul was put in the body of an automaton called P01S, but she has no memories of it, so she doesn't realize who she is. She's just working at a bakery, and basically no one knows who she is yet, at the point of the story I'm reading currently, but they'll figure out who she is later, because I know that from the anime. Uh, but yeah, uh, and so Aoi Tori is very in love with her, even though she's dead, and like kind of obsessed with her. Well, just because she's dead doesn't mean you don't love them. Yeah, no. but he's like, he like the, in the, uh, uh, like his first introduction as a character is like, he's like, um, oh, tomorrow I'm going to go confess my love to her. Yeah. But she's dead, and everyone's like, oh, you're fucking nuts, you can't confess your love to a dead girl. Uh, but he's like, yeah. Anyway, so... Oh, how many books? I don't remember. And the, you're on book one? I'm like not I'm 30% through do, book one. Although I've also, a lot of this... And, you did, and it's free? Well, it's not supposed to be free, <laughs> but I, the translation is free, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it can't I can't be. believe someone spent all that time translating. Well, there's a team of people. It's not great. It's not about, it's like amateur, as you can tell. But, um, yeah, it's great. Um, so yeah, that's all the characters. This is a diagram of the, of the Musashi ship. Oh. So, um, it's like a robot. You, well, it might really be a top down perspective. Okay. So, each of these is like an individual ship and they're yeah. connected with thick ropes that trans. They're like uh, pipes for oil and water and stuff as yeah. well. But they're also ropes to hold What's together. 1648? Oh, 1648 is the year that uh, the test, like the last year, wrote down in the testament oh, okay. before it stopped. Updating. But anyway, so this is the different names for the different ships. They're all named after wards in Tokyo. Tama, Ome, Taka, and Musashino, Asakusa. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, and they all have different things, like um, Musashi Aridust Academy is here. Uh, this, the front two ships are mostly used for cargo, but this one also has a Yakuza office in it, because there's not many regulations. This one is mostly a tourist area. No, this one is mostly a tourist area. Um, it's pretty cool. God, this is definitely your, your cup of tea. I know, right? It's like, it sounds so convoluted. It's very convoluted, but it's very good. Um, um, I think you interested. I've got three books to read in this two weeks off. Would you be nice? You want to read it? Yeah, <laughs> um, it sounds a bit... Bit much for my old brain. Yeah, and, uh, I'm happy to deal with a bit of drama and a bit of um death. I am. Um, well, I only well a lot of what I know is because I watched the anime already. A lot of what I know is because I've watched the anime yeah, already. Anime. Yeah. Like the anime adapt. So I already know a lot of the stuff I'm yeah. reading currently. So it, that's why it's easy for me to remember because it's like the second time I'm being told it. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. Uh, Welcome to the corrections part of the video. First correction, uh, yes I did just explain the plot of Horizon the Middle of Nowhere to my mother. Yes, I probably got some stuff wrong. Um, so if you're a Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere law expert, just know, firstly I'm only 36% through the first book, although I've seen the first two seasons of the anime. Um, I think I can be forgiven for messing some stuff up. If that, if the, I'm pretty sure I got some stuff wrong, probably chances are. So don't, if you don't come at me, okay. Secondly, um, the you know earlier when I was like, yo, Princess Planet Phonics is like the reverse Ulululia. Uh, I don't know what the fuck I was talking about. At, at that time, I had some intense brain fog. Um, oh yeah, the reason I just explained um, Horizon and Illinois to my mother for 23 minutes, non-stop talking, is because I've started taking caffeine pills uh, a lot, <laughs> so I'm just ca highly caffeinated at all times, it's fucking great, I need to get, I, I need to get into meth, I would love meth so much, <laughs> anyway, um, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I when I said uh, uh, yeah, right, uh, when I said <laughs> plunder, it's like the reverse Ula Lilia. I don't know what the fuck I was talking about. That was some that was some nonsensical nonsense. That was nonsense. I don't know what that was about. Uh, but yeah, I was having from intense brain fog, and I took some fifty milligrams of caffeine. Uh, not healthy and just caffeine to, to stimulate my way out of that brain fog and it worked pretty damn well uh, so yeah that's the corrections part of this video do bees even have skin like what if the fur just grows right out of their organs and like their fleshy muscle parts no one even looks no one's ever looked close enough to a bee to find out so we wouldn't even know if bees we wouldn't even know if bees didn't have skin if the f I've added some new things to the wall I thought I'd take you through them first is safe and fat it is to be chanted safe and fat safe and fat safe and fat safe and fat like that I literally can't explain what it means. I know exactly what it means, but it, it I doesn't I can't think of a way to explain the internal dialogue over months that led to that. So you're just going to have to accept safe and fat for what it is. And on the other side we got Konata and uh my my Japanese handwriting is not the best, but um, it says uh, sorry, my mum came in. So this is somewhat poor Japanese. Uh, it says Taira wa segi, right? The second half is right. The first half Taira, okay, Taira flat wa is. Segi Justice Flat is justice, right? Uh I don't actually I think I pointed to the wrong things there I don't know what I'm doing really I don't know how to speak fucking Japanese Fuck you think this is? I copied it from a fucking website, bro <laughs> You think I know what the fuck I'm talking about? Uh Anyway I think that's wrong like Taida means flat, but um, I I think um, in uh, in anime when they say flat is when they say what is translated as flat is justice. I'm pretty sure they don't say Taida. I'm pretty sure I might be wrong, but I think I think they might say chon you. Uh, Small boobs, right? I, not not tighter. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I I don't remember exactly, but uh, I feel like I would remember if they said tighter wasegi. I think they say chon you wasegi. Not entirely sure, but either way, the meaning is the same. Flat is justice. Then down here, I put one up. This is the first time this has happened. I put one up underneath the Uno poster, uh, but I decided I didn't like it, um, and so I took it down. And as you can see, I ripped the Uno poster that it was attached to when I took it down. It's a little fucked up. So that's a bit of a shame, but um, hey, you live and learn. You live and learn. Oh, there's another one over here. I forgot about this one. This is new. I can't think. I got too many thoughts. <clears throat> That's a good one. I can't think I got too many thoughts. But yeah. Um Yeah now I oh there's an also oblong. Oblong, that's new. So yeah. We're we're, we're really making moves. The wall of text is a proper wall of text at this point. It's no longer like it's no longer a joke, ain't nothing to fuck with, you know. Also Wu Tang shit, you know what I'm saying, ho? Also Wu Tang shit, you know what I'm saying, ho?
Welcome back to the corrections bit of the video. I just realised I brain farted completely. I translated flat as chornu, which is obviously not flat. It's the exact opposite. It means big boobs. Chor... I should have known that. I don't know why I brain farted. Fucking small boobs is, um, like, kink... Uh, he knew. He knew it's small boobs. He knew wasegi would be the correct one. Not cho knew wasegi. That would be big boobs are justice. But it's actually he knew wasegi. Not cho knew wasegi. I think I got that right. Um, I might be wrong. There you go. Japanese. So an update. It's not really an update. Update is not the right word. Uh, a log a log of what i'm up to i am almost finished very almost according to my calculations uh f finished um magical marriage lunatics the visual novel i'm playing the elge i am playing very close to being finished i i am like probably i i could if i if i had the motivation and determination i could have finished it today uh, like if if I I played some today for like an hour or, or a bit more, but uh, I probably could have finished it today if I was to just blast it out. But I felt like reading Horizon instead, which I I need to decide on what I'm calling it. I think I'm gonna call it Cure Hora because in Japanese it's Kyo Kaisenjo no Horizon, uh, right? And Japanese light novel titles often get shortened by their fans. For example, Olegamoto Konani Kurai Kunai. Is that it? Is that it? Is that what the original one is? Hold on. Ore no emoto ga konani kawai wake ganai. But I'm not very good at Japanese, as you may have gathered from the fact that I, I don't know Japanese. Uh, ore no emoto ga konani kawai wake ganai is short until uh, ore emo, right? Uh, lots of things, or there's one. There's fucking... I don't need to give you examples. There's so many. Gochumon wa Usagi Deska is shortened. It's not a light novel, but it's shortened to Gochi Usa. Uh, very common practice. And the shortening for uh, Kyokai Senjo no Horizon is Kyo, Kyo Hora. So I think from now on I will refer to it as Kyo Hora um, instead of Horizon. Because Horizon is just an English word. And I've been, normally I've been calling it Horizon for short, but I will now call it Kyo Hora for short instead of Horizon, I think. My hair is very sharp. I've got, I've got a devilock. I should join, I should fucking join Misfits with this devilock. But yeah, I will, I will call it Kyo Hora from now on. That was a bit of a side note. So once I finish Magical Marriage Lunatics very soon, probably tomorrow, if I can be bothered to play it. Because at this point... You know, it's it's fine, but it's not like I feel like I like I feel like I'm done with it. Like like I've, I've put enough to put as much time into it as I want to put into it. Then I am going to continue reading Kyohora, and then I will switch. Then I will play well simultaneously to reading Kyohora. I will play. Um, and I've been struggling to decide this in my head. I, I think I will play uh, Chaos Head. Um, yes, I believe I will play Chaos Head because Chaos Head is about 30 hours long, I think, uh, which will be a nice break from the, the 50 hour long V ends up been playing. And also, I've been, yeah, I want to play Chaos Head a lot. And then after I finish Chaos Head, I will play Dracu Riot. Then after I finish Dracu Riot, I will most likely play Chrono Clock. And then, I'm not sure, I might play Little Busters. I might play, um, oh, fuck. 
Yeah, I might play Little Busters, I might play DC DeCapo, or I might play some fucking bullshit Aerogay, like um, um, Emoto Paradise or something. I kind of want to play Emoto Paradise. Same people who did Magical Marriage Lunatics did Emoto Paradise. It even, they bring, the main character plays Emoto Paradise at one point during Magical Marriage Lunatics. Uh, so maybe, but this is planning very far ahead given that, um, uh, uh, Drag QI is very long, more than 50 hours long, and so is, uh, this is according to VNDB. Uh, and uh, so is um, whatever the other one I was just talking about. Chrono Clock is also really long. And then, you know, I got a lot of fucking visual novels to play, bro. Like, <laughs> I got a lot. Let me go on my wish list right now on VNDB. It's, it's already long as shit. I need to stop. It's so fun browsing VNDB because it's such a well-constructed database and it just... It literally makes me so happy to just see a database this well constructed. I browse it for like literally hours, just just looking, just browsing, because it's so fun to to read through a, a well constructed database. Um, but yeah, so I have a lot. Um, I'm not. I, it doesn't tell me how many. Oh, waiting labels added and modified started. Yeah, it doesn't tell me how many I have, but it's a lot. I'll just put it that way. Um, okay, uh, what's one that I really wanted to play? Um, Noble Works seems pretty good. Uh, oh yeah, um, a fucking Umineko. Um, Umineko. Umineko. I definitely want to play Umineko. Um, uh, and the other one, Higurashi, as well. Um, I've got a lot of vocal fry going on right now. A lot of vocal fry in my voice. Wow. Some of these I don't know what they are. Oh yeah, I wanted to play this one. This is a funny one that I found. It's called Zetai Saikyo Oppai Senso Kyo Nyu Okoku versus Hin Nyu Okoku, right? You may remember from a couple of clips ago when I mentioned the existence of Kyo Nyu and Hin Nyu, right? I guess this proves me wrong because I definitely said Cho Nyu in that clip, but it's actually Kyo Nyu. Which makes more sense, again. Don't, I don't claim to be Japanese. I don't claim to know any Japanese. I don't know why I fucking try. I should shut the fuck up and never read any Japanese in my life. I, I'm at least trying with the pronunciation. Like, it's better than, than reading it without trying, right? That's my attitude anyway. Like, points for effort, please. Um, but yeah, so what that means is... Um, Absolute best, Z Zetai Saikyo would be like the absolute best. Oppai Senso, uh, Boob War, uh, Kyo Nyu Okoku, uh, timing, definite timing there. Where was I? Ah, yes, Kyo Nyu Okoku, the, the, the uh, Big Boob Kingdom versus Hinyu Okoku, Small Boob Kingdom. Uh, there you go. That is a. That is the, that is the. It's the boobs war. It's the boobs war. <laughs> I I don't know why I want to play this. Well, I think you can tell why I want to play this. It sounds fucking hilarious, and it has a pretty decent rating as well. Um, I don't know anything else about it. That's all I looked at. Is I saw the title and I thought that sounds fucking funny. Um. What else have I got in here? Um, I don't know. I got a lot, but I'm trying to remember. It's hard to... I don't remember their names very well. Sun Oba Witch. That's the same people that made Dracula. I know that much. Um, 
Oh yeah, at some point I'm gonna have to play Mav Love and Mav Love Alternate Alternative, right? Of course. Uh that is something that everyone has to do at some point. But both of those are long as shit. Mav Love if you don't know, if you're not into visual novels, Mav Love Alternative is like the Evangelion of visual novels. It's the the oh, this is the best visual novel ever made. Like the commonly regarded best visual novel ever made. But um it is the sequel to a somewhat more mediocre visual novel called Mav Love. Uh that's all I know. Oh, also, it's got, it's about a mech war. Like, apart, as far as I've seen, and I haven't done that much research, because I... It's just happened. Uh, the first... Like, uh, Mav Love, the original, is just, like, a pretty standard, like, high school romance thing. And then Mav Love Alternative is, like, a fucking, like, war story about, like... I don't even know what... I just know it's like about, it's like a real, it's like Gundam style mechs, not like giant robo style mechs. It's, it's, uh, it's all about how war is bad and stuff. Uh, yeah, there's a fuck ton of fucking visual novels. Um, Koi Gasaku. Koro Sakura Doki. Koike Sakura. I don't even know what this is. Uh, I don't even remember it. I think I probably, most likely, I just put it on my list because I like the art style. Um, I don't know what this is either. Ikinari Anata ni Koishiteru. This sounds like a Galge. Or at least an, like a, an arrow gay of, of some kind, yeah. Ooh. Oh, I know why I put that on my list from that image. Uh, can't show that on YouTube. Can't show that on YouTube. <laughs> um, Narcissu Planetarian, that's a classic key visual novel. Uh, Rewrite, that's another key visual novel. Um, Idolvice, Aiden Fantasia, that's a short one, apparently, might be good, who knows, uh, oh yeah, Yosuga no Soda, I wanted to play this, sounds, looks really good, um, this is no longer a list of the things I'm gonna do in order, this is just me reading through my fucking shit, um, I'll stop that now. Not the most entertaining content for YouTube. Uh, but safe to say, I've mentioned a small amount on these this big list. Um, Clover Days, that looks good. Sorry. Uh, Clover Days is also very, quite long. Uh, safe to say, I'm going to be busy for a long time being into visual novels. I wonder if it's because I wear head... I'm trying to figure out why I'm suddenly so aware that my ears, like, you can't see my ears when I face head on. Maybe, I wonder if it's my headphones pushing back my ears, or if my ears have just always been like this. I missed my fucking mouth and just spilt water all over myself. Disappointing. Disappointed in myself there. Missed my fucking mouth. Of course I did. It's a very no thank you thing to do. So I've realised... Two things. Whenever I record on my phone and upload straight from my phone, the audio is really quiet. And I don't want this audio to be really quiet. I want it to have proper audio. And the only way to do that is to import it. Well, I, it's probably possible to do it in my phone editing app but I want to do some more editing so I'm probably get like you could do it in the phone editing app but it will be a hassle um, I'm just gonna fucking import it into Final Cut uh, which is a bit of a hassle it's not that much of a hassle it's just a very small hassle um, the, the other thing I realized is that this video is like long as shit. This is like a three hour long video or something, like almost. 
Well, when did that happen? This was just supposed to be a fun little thing. It's supposed to be a little thing, not a three hours thing. This isn't supposed to be Birds 4. This isn't supposed to be fucking Birds 4, mate. Uh, See, I don't even know if this is a good video. In fact, I would say this is a bad video compared to like Birds. Like bird, Birds 4 or Birds 2, Birds 3, Birds 3. Which is another similar long anthology, anthology, uh, I would call it an anthology video. That's a good name. I'm going to call this type of video an anthology video. I also came up with another phrase today, completely unrelated to what we're talking about right now. Uh, but a very cool phrase that I'm going to start using. Um, it's uh, the equivalent of a... Um, have you ever heard of the, the white saviour complex? Probably have heard of a white saviour complex. I was thinking, we need a version of white saviour complex for neurotypicals uh, talking to talking down to neurodivergence and my, my idea was the carer complex uh, or the neurotypical carer complex uh, so I'm going to start using that and hopefully it becomes popular uh, I'm going to coin that phrase right now, I'm going to coin it that was me looking down because a day ago, I spotted a 10 pence piece, a coin, a 10p coin down there. And what do you know? It isn't there right now. Who knows where that's gone? I probably picked it up and started fiddling with it and then threw it somewhere, as I am, tend to do with things that I find on my floor. Um, so yeah, that's my plans for my life is to read all of Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere. If you don't realise what an undertaking that is, um, There we go. Here's a good. This will be a good um, example of the undertaking I'm currently undertaking. Um, this is uh, so they call them light novels, but uh, they are not light. This is the light novels of Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere. Um, as you can see, they are fucking big books. They are not light, nor are they no well, they're, they're novels, but they're not very light. Actually, I actually think this is... I can't read the Japanese. But I actually think this is both Horizon... No, I think this is just Horizon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, that's just Horizon. I thought it might have been Horizon and... Um, Awari no Chronicle, which is the prequel series to Horizon, but no, it's just Horizon. Uh, so yeah, that's a fucking undertaking, and once I finish it, I plan on making a lecture, like a PCP lecture style video, on uh, on, on Horizon, which is going to be the most dense. No one's ever done a lecture on something that big. Like what? There's a fucking what is the. The, there's like like that's not a lecture that's like a fucking whole fucking course <laughs> that's like you do a lecture on fucking one of those books you don't that's a course um maybe i'll do that maybe i'll just do a fucking lecture course and each lecture is one of the books where i explain in plain english the actual plot of each book that's actually that might be a better idea because putting it all into one lecture might be might be too much. Um, or I I could probably group them up. I probably would do it in because um, you, yeah you could probably fit like maybe two two books per per lecture. Some books are longer than others and stuff. Uh, but so far I am like yeah. So this is I'm going to be reading Horizon for the foreseeable future. So I shouldn't be planning my lectures already because I have I'm like have a lot of fucking reading to do before I get to that stage. Um, so this is really annoying. This movement, I imagine it's not fun to watch. Uh, I'm sorry. 
about that, but it's, it's just due to how the phones are. It's just due to how my phone is. It's hard to hold without sometimes doing that. Um, so that's an undertaking. Yeah, so I'm basically... I, I've stopped watching anime. I'm going to watch um, Gotri Momoa Usagi Desuka Season 3 next season. But that's probably the last anime I'm going to watch for a while. I'll finish Hokago Table Nishi for this season. And I will watch Gotri Usa Season 3 next anime season. And I don't think I will watch any more anime for a while. Because light novels and visual novels are where it's at. And I have a lot of catching up to do to get them to a, a decent level. Especially when you got shit like... Horizon, and when you... Oh, wait, I decided I was going to call it Cure Horror, and now I'm back to calling it Horizon. When you got shit like Cure Horror, and when you got shit like Umineko, both, like, long fucking things, this, like, this, this is, this, this ain't, like, the diff, it's like a difference in attitude. I'm training myself to, to appreciate some delayed gratification and some, like, some dedication, because, like, when it comes to anime, the type of anime I like tend to be, um, Slice of Life's. Uh, if you look at my top 10, it's almost all Slice of Life, except for Horizon, Lane, and Evangelion. And Evangelion, I mean, yeah, those are all in there for- anyway. I just tend to like Slice of Life anime, and those tend to be, uh, 13 episodes. Maximum 26 episodes. I don't think any of the ones in my top 10 are 26 episodes. Oh, well, Hidemori Sketch represents all of Hidemori Sketch, which is a lot more than 26 episodes, but that's spread over multiple seasons. And I watched Hidemori Sketch very slowly over the course of, like, a year. So, um, yeah. I, I haven't trained myself to be dedicated. Uh, but, but, um, switching to these longer form mediums, it changes the way you look at it. Because I was looking at anime like, oh, I just gotta blast through this one. But you physically, like... I was looking at it like, okay, I'll try and finish it in like two or three days, otherwise I'll lose interest. And that that is evidently how it happened. That is, like, if I didn't finish a show in two or three days, I would lose interest. But it's physically impossible to finish a visual novel in two or three days if it's, like, long. If it's very long. It's not physically impossible. Depends on how long it is, obviously. But, like, you'd have to be reading constantly to finish it very quickly. And, uh, I need some breaks from time to time. So, I, now I've learned to treat it in a different perspective. And that perspective is this. To, to, because, obviously, I'm getting everything for free, right? Um, so, I, I don't see it as having any value. Like, um... Anime doesn't have any value to me. <laughs> a series of anime is, is a throwaway thing. Like, yeah, I'll bang out 13 episodes in a day. Or a couple days. It's a throwaway thing and then I'll never think about it again. It goes on my mouth, it's done. It's done and dusted, I'll wipe my hands of it. When it But when it comes to a visual novel, you can't do that. You have to treat it like a video game that you paid $60 for. You have to treat it like, okay, this is going to be an activity, this is like a long form thing I'm in for that I, you have to imagine like, okay like I paid for this, you know like I, like, this is not like a a consumer and throw away, this is like a live with it for a little while, right I, I'm not sure if you, you if you understand the distinction there between anime and video games but yeah it's like, it's like that, it's like that, um, and books are like, uh, when I was a kid, I could very easily slip into books to the point where it became a problem. I would read in class, I would read so constantly, I would stay up, I would literally, 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 like, I can't exaggerate this enough. Relatively big books. We're, we're talking young adult fiction here, of course. But, like, um... Uh, like, a, a pro the size of a novel. Let's see, I can't really remember any specific examples of this. But, uh, of, like, a book to give you a, an example. But, like, 
like reasonably sized novels multiple times i would i would get it one day i would i would get it the next day in the morning i would wake up i would start reading it at breakfast i would read it on my way to school i would read it in class at school at lunch at school i would come home i would read it on the way home and i would read it while i was eating dinner and then i would read it from dinner until I went to bed and then under the covers after the lights out I would finish it and that would be it and I'd finish a book in a day and that was like not even a really that much of a big deal I did it multiple times uh, if not one day two days three days max and I would also be reading the, if it didn't happen like that it was because I was reading like three books at, at a time I used to do that a lot as well I used to read well, not literally at the same time, but I would alternate between whatever. Like, I would carry to school two different books with me, and if I got bored of one, I'd switch to the other. That's what I'm trying to do with, with, with Horizon is my one book, and then whatever visual novel I'm playing is my other book. Uh, so if the FPS has gone down, I don't know why. The, it's, it's probably the camera overheating. Uh, that's fun. It does seem like the FPS has gone down. Um, but yeah, I used to be able to completely lose myself in a book. I wouldn't realise time was going by. I would just be completely wrapped up in it. I can't do that anymore. As I found out, it's very hard for me to get into that flow state with reading. Even a great book, like, uh, since I have it right next to me, House of Leaves. Like, I can't get into the flow state of reading it. Like, it just, something about it... <laughs> just doesn't it doesn't click with me anymore i don't know why i can't do it really with any media like can, it's, it's rare it happens from time to time but it's rare um like little distractions keep getting me i am not sure what or why that is and i'm trying to retrain myself to be in that sort of state of mind um it's good for life good for life reading good for you Read, hot take books are cool even if they're like, they okay. Books are cool. Um, yeah. And I will end this video with a with my brand new... Hopefully, I shouldn't have ended the video with the best part. Maybe I should have. I don't know. Uh, with my brand new theory of human psychology, which I just invented. And uh, that human is this. The, the human brain can only have it only exist in three states: neurotypical, autism, and schizophrenia. And all mental illnesses exist somewhere on this grand tricyclic spec, uh, spectrum. So, for example, uh, of course, very obvious, uh, autism spectrum disorder is this line. And any sort of schizophrenic or psychotic disorder is it somewhere along this line. So, for example, Asperger's is probably like here. For, ex uh, for example, like Asperger's probably here. Or, um, uh, let's say, um, psychotic depression, probably like here. Something like that, right? Uh, then bipolar... Okay, I'll explain like this. Okay, uh, depression is a subgenre of autism. It's like here. Depression is a subgenre of autism. And mania is a subgenre of schizophrenia. So bipolar disorder is like here. And depending on the intensity of your bipolar, you know, for like uh, cyclothemia is like you're here. Um, um, bipolar two is like here. Bipolar one is like here. Um, uh, uh, BPD, is, is you sort of around this area, the borderline personality disorders like this kind of area, uh, you know, we can continue onwards forever like, like this. Uh, name any mental illness, it fits somewhere along this spectrum. Uh, oh yeah, l let me keep going. OCD, that is definitely an autism akin disorder, we're like here somewhere. Um, we can keep going, we can keep going. What's another one? I'm gonna keep going. Uh, Schizoid personality, that's like, yeah, that's like some serious fucking shit, bro. Schizoid personality is some serious fucking shit. That's like, that's like some, even though it's called schizoid personality, it seems closer to autistic to me, but I might be wrong. 
You know what? I'm going to leave that one for you guys to decide. Uh, schizo schizotypal? That's definitely like you're over here somewhere. Um, obviously, DID is like somewhere over here. Um, the reason I put OCD over by autism should be very apparent. The databasing and categorization. Um, it's the three basic tenets of, of humanity. Neurotypical is neurotypical. Autism is databasing and categorization. Schizophrenia is uh, multiplicity. So there you have it. Um, and I also I, I want to expand this theory to involve all um, drug-induced mental states. So for example, all psychedelics are on the schizophrenic side of things, all psychedelics are over here, all dissociatives are over here, um, right? Uh, so like 5-MeO-DMT is right up here, yeah, NMDMT, uh, yeah, LS, yeah, yeah, psilocybin, LSD, uh, etc. Yeah, DXM, ketamine, dyschloroketamine, etc. etc. Nitrous oxide somewhere on there. Uh, and then you got your stimulants is like an over here type of situation. Uh, because they they do increase your autism but they also increase your your mania, your schizophrenia. So it's more close to the schizo side of things. Uh your your fucking um, your opiates are kind of like a down here situation, like a, maybe like a here, maybe that's where an opiate would be. Uh, benzos, I don't know, I don't know where to put benzos. Uh, think of what, what, what exists, oh yeah, deliriants, deliriants are, are, are here, delirium is here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so there you go, that's my autism schizophrenia triangle. Uh, we could, I'm sure we could put more on. I'm just struggling to think of types of drugs here uh, and types of mental disorders. Uh, but there you go. That is my that is my autism. This is this is the entirety of the human experience encompassed. This is um, I don't know how to describe neurotypical like in a, in an easy way to understand. Uh, but I yeah, autism is is. Like your 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 categorization, schizophrenia is your multiplicities. Your 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 your, your multiplicities, yeah. And so that's it. That's the video. And uh, goodbye.